Welcome everybody to the eighth annual Snowshoe GNCC High Atop Snowshoe Mountain. A storm is a brewing. A 100% chance of rain scheduled at race time. Not going to deter our two points leaders, Adam McGill and Walker Fowler. Last year, Fowler having a catastrophic failure, knocking him out of the race, and McGill taking the win at his home course track. Once again, Cole Richardson looking to get up here and repeat his victory over last year. So it's going to be a perfect storm brewing here on the mountain at Snowshoe West Virginia. Thanks a lot, Matt Watson. You're right, the storm is brewing and it's doing it weather-wise and it's doing championship-wise here for, as we celebrate 152 years of West Virginia. This is West Virginia Day in the great state of West Virginia. In 1863, they became a state. And the question is, will a West Virginian be able to take the win today? Can he make it two in a row here at Snowshoe Mountain? And can he make it two in a row this year in the great state of West Virginia? Of course. Walker Fowler got the Ohio race just two weeks ago at the John Pinton GNCC, but two weeks before that, we were in Masontown, West Virginia, kind of a preview to this snowshoe race itself. But here we are today, getting the stage set for round number nine in the long summer break for these riders to sit and think about what this championship points race is starting to brew up like. Of course, if you look at it, Chris Board still way behind the eight ball as far as the championship is concerned. It looks like it's coming down between two of Walker Fowler and Adam McGill. Right now, these riders are revving their machines up and getting themselves ready to go. And we're about ready to meet our starting lineup for this eighth annual Snowshoe GNCC, our celebration of the Blackwater 100. As I believe we're gonna shut them down, guys, and get things ready to go as we get set to introduce the uh, starting lineup for today's racing action. We see the blue flags are out and they're shutting them down. Guys, shut them down, shut them down, shut them down. Shut them down, shut them down. We got, wow, hundreds of riders out here on this street in front of Snowshoe Village as we get set to meet our top 10 in overall points. The race not only a little different in the way that it starts, but is also lined up in accordance to overall points over the front two rows here at Snowshoe on these streets. And as we uh, look down uh, across this uh, front couple of rows here, we see our top 10 end points, and they are as follows. Rolling to the starting line first today, he hails from right here out of the great state of West Virginia on a CST Pirate MX Lone Star Derisi Racing Tire Blocks Honda, Adam McGill. And the rain starts to fall. Rolling to the line second today, he rides aboard the number two, fresh off a win two weeks ago in his home state of Ohio. He rides on an NFAB and Pro Yamaha Maxis backed MXB and Lone Star, it's Walker Fowler. Rolling to the line third today in points. He has landed in the top five, five out of eight runnings right here at this Snowshoe GNCC. From Casca, Pennsylvania on a JMR ATVRiders.com backed Honda, the Sneaky Snake, Jared McClure. Rolling to the line today, fourth in points. He's aboard the number six, a rookie here this year from Bidwell, Ohio, a former XC2 Pro-Am class champion, backed by Maxis and B. Neal Motorsports, Bryson Neal. Rolling to the line today, fifth in points. He is a six-time defending GNCC champion. Riding aboard the number one from Sunbury, Pennsylvania, on the Maxis Fly Yamaha, Chris Borridge. Rolling to the line next today, sixth in points. Riding aboard the number seven from Irwin, Pennsylvania, with one win to his credit so far this year on a Bithel Racing Maxis Precision Bank Suzuki, Chris Bithel. Rolling to the line next, get on board my friends. He rides aboard the number five machine. He hails out of Edinburgh, Pennsylvania on an NFAB and Pro Yamaha backed by Max's MXP and of course Lone Star. We're talking about the Cold Train, Cole Richardson. Rolling to the line next today. He's won here twice, riding aboard the number 341 eighth in points in 2015 and 
from Medina, Ohio on a fast track. Wolf backed Honda, Brian Wolf. Rolling to the line today, ninth in points. He rides aboard the number nine from Mount Pleasant, Pennsylvania on a coastal Waynesburg MXP Axis Lone Star Yoshimira Yamaha, Jay Shadron. And rolling to the line today, 10th in points overall. He rides aboard the number 16 from Aurora, Ohio on a GBC Yamaha backed by HMF. We know him as Johnny G in CC. It's Johnny G, Johnny Gallagher. And that, ladies and gentlemen, your starting lineup for this, the Snowshoe GNCC presented by Amsoil as our riders make their way back to their start positions and the machines begin to warm back up, ladies and gentlemen. We are set to go GNCC racing here in the great state of West Virginia. Again, celebrating our 152nd birthday here and 40 years ago this weekend that the first ever Blackwater 100 was ran. I can feel the electric in the air. The rain showers are starting to fall down now here high atop the mountain, but it is not dampening the spirits of the racers nor the race fans that have congregated high atop this mountain at elevation 4,848 feet. That's 4848 as they call it, the second highest elevation in the great state of West Virginia. As all attention be turning down now to Ricky Towery who once again is our master of ceremonies, the conductor, if you will. We're searching him out. I can't even find him right now. He is buried within a sea of people behind a wall of umbrellas as the rain showers seem to be lightening up a little bit at the moment. But I'll tell you, the nerves and the anticipation and the anxiety of what today's racing action holds certainly does not lighten any whatsoever. As we see that Ricky Towery has given the sign, we're now less than one minute away. The next sign we see will be the blue flag, and that blue flag simply signifies that we are 30 seconds away from going GNCC racing today. Actually, now we're down to the one minute mark, so now we're one minute away, my friends. One minute away from history getting underway here with the Snowshoe GNCC. You gotta know, on a 40th birthday like this, for the great uh, Blackwater 100 and the 152nd second birthday coinciding on the same weekend, you gotta think something special is a brewing here in the GNCC Racing Nation. Blue flags out, we're less than 30 seconds away from going Snowshoe GNCC's racing. Are you ready to go here, Snowshoe? Yes, I can feel the electric in the air today. All attention turning to Ricky Towers. He says, 10 seconds. Row number one, Chris Borch, Walker Fowler, Jared McClure, Bryson Neal, and Adam McGill off and rolling into that first turn. Row number two, the Cole Train, Cole Richardson, Chris Bithel, Jay Shadron, Johnny Gallagher, and Brian Wall. Row number three, getting set to roll next. Kevin Yoho, Josh Merritt, Landon Wolf, Marty Christofferson, and Cody Collier. Rolling next, Randy Hamilton, Blake Tornes, Tom Coons, or AJ Coons, Wesley Wolf, and Braden Henthorn. We're up next, Brent Sturdyvon, I believe we've got ready to roll off this next row itself. One of West Virginia's own. He could win this one as well. Luke Shepard, XC2 Pro-Am rolling now. Luke Shepard, Andrew Connors, Brad Amon, ready to roll off this next row. Row seven, James Green, Levi Cohen, Danny Rogers, and Bryson Hobbs. And they're off. Row number eight coming up next, Fred Marley, Wes Kinsley, Tristan Huffman, and Michael Lancaster. Row number nine coming up, Jonathan Fugate, Robert Picarori, Cameron Bruce, and Anthony Herring. Row 10 next, Wesley Stone, Matt Hanna, Walter Shoemaker, and Matt Pierce. Row number 11, Big Papa P, the Bet 28 Plus class with Jeff Pickens, Tom Jansky, Kenneth Kelly, and Dustin Hendershot. 
This will be row number 12. Christian Meyer, Kenny Schick, Devin Fihan, and Brandon Eichard. Row number 13, Kevin McCowan, J.D. Brown, Corey Silverthorne, and Greg Covert. Row 14, Dylan Edwards, Noah Landis, Anthony Barnes, and Brett Cover. Row number 15, Tyler Wares, Bodie Lamore. These are College A riders. Next up, another College A rider, Brad Pearson. And he's off as we go down the road, number 17 now, College A, Gabriel Nod and Alec Matthews. The Vet A 28 plus class, some stragglers there, Pepe Denal and Travis Nichols. Row number 19 coming up next, Nathan Hornacek, Matthew King, Cole Williamson, and Steve Covert. Row number 20, Joshua Beach, Robert Hegman, Austin Fox, Kevin Patterson, and Dustin Burkhammer. Row number 21, Michael McAvoy, Simon Bissell, Ben Brink, and Dwight Pollard. Row number 22, Shannon Lacey, along with Brett Henke and Dustin Pickett, Junior A, 22 plus class. Up next, Senior A, B class riders, John Glotta, Aaron Delancey, Mark Batson, and Rusty Repass. Senior A, B, 38 plus, Ian Buckingham and Joe Gower. I believe we go to row 27, Jeremy Gouchard, Todd Muscala, the Marlboro man, and Adam Reed. Up next, row 28, Gregory Westfall, Dale Matz, and Daniel Webb, Brian Locke, and Philip Thayer. Row 29, Jason Dillard, Richard Kuhn, Casey Edwards, Lyle Morrison, and John Hanna. Row number 30, Dustin Atkinson, Christopher Croston, Blake Meyer, Braden Schick, and Jeremy Hill. Row 31, Andrew Manbeck, Charles Dawson, Weston Scott, Cameron Horton, Nicholas Mas Mastrangelo, and Tanner Walker off and rolling. Row 32, Brandon Barnes, Michael Schaefer, Donald Boylan, Colin Gerber, and Ryan Bovis. Row 33, Bobby Duker, Frankie Egress, and Austin Carey. Also, uh, Jamie Wells and Scott Pearson. Row 34, Mark Miller, Tyler Creel, Cody Wallace, Chandler Burner, and Jordan Neal. Row 35, Charlie Rogers, Chris Davidson, and Nathan Pierce. Row 36, Eric Holyfield, Brian Felicki, PP, Ben DeMarco, and Cody Wolford. Row 37, Caleb Bailey, Zachary Fortner, Chris Wittenberger, and Dustin Dickerson. Looks like uh, Chris Riddle and Rex Pierce, row 38. Row 39 will be Alan Tuttle, Brett Fike, Jay Turner, Jonathan Kuda, and Jason Bush. Row 40, Robert Matz and James Mauger. That goes, that, goes uh, that was the row, I think, with, Ch with Jason and those guys. Here's Robert Mapp and James Mauger. And our final row will be uh, Nick Camilli and John Salsa as we have uh, some 150 riders that are traversing the terrain of rough and rugged West Virginia, celebrating 152 years of statehood, 40 years of the Blackwater 100, and this is GNCC Live on RacerTV.com. We'll be back right after this.
This Racer TV live broadcast is brought to you by Amsoil, the first in synthetics. By Rocky Mountain ATV MC, get ready. By Maxxis Tires, find your flow. And powered by Yamaha Generators. And welcome, welcome back. I'm Rodney Tomlin, joined by uh, Brad Andrews. Man, talk about the quick switch there. We, we made it. <laughs> Back over to the DB trailer. Brad Andrews, how's it going, man? And we just witnessed uh, what I think could be a uh, big, pace of his, big page in history that just took place here. And uh, that was the, uh, well, 41st start of racing since the first ever running of that uh, Blackwater 100 some 40 years ago this weekend. Yeah, right. Now you showed here today, they had a ton of four-wheelers here. They had a great start here. We started in town like Blackwater used to. I actually was fortunate enough to do one Blackwater, and we got to start in town. And it's kind of a neat experience because everybody always wants to ride their dirt bike or their four-wheeler in town. And this event actually lets you start in town, front of the police, front of everybody. You can't get in any trouble on your bike or your quad. You get to come through town. The people are all lining the whole fields and the sides of the roads, and it's it's a really cool experience, and then you also get to come back across the track later, which it used to be the road, and they actually cut off a whole hill for us, so it's really cool. You get the big town experience, and man, the people just come out in groves. They can stay in their condos and look right out the windows, Rod, and see the whole track. I think that's great. I know that uh, I've talked to a lot of people over the years that have set out on their balconies out in some of these condominiums that are uh, scattered across the mountain and stuff here at Snowshoe, and they, that's one thing that they talk about is being able to sit there. They can barbecue, they can grill out, they got the cooler right there. It's, uh, you know, uh, the best of both worlds, man, racing and relaxing all at the same time, and you can't beat that. That from a, a spectator standpoint, but on the other hand, flip side of that is this is probably one of the tougher races that the riders are going to race here in 2000. 2015. It has been deemed America's new toughest race. Now, some years it's tough, tougher than others, but uh, at times we know it's got the potential to be some of the uh, gnarliest and most challenging terrain that these riders are going to try to traverse. Yeah, Rodney, you know, with Mother Nature here in the mountain this year, I think it's going to be a wet one. I heard they had snow here like up to four months ago, so I expect the size of the mountain to be really muddy. There's going to be springs popping up here that usually don't have water in them because it's been kind of dry the last few years. And then we had those big giant mud holes we'll down below that are on the, on the almost like a mile long, it seems like. And guys just have to keep on coming through it and coming through it. And every year we go there, they get deeper and gnarlier and worse. And I'm sure Barry Hawk and crew have put that section in back in because there were so many people up here, Rodney, this morning, and all of a sudden, everybody's going off the mountain. <laughs> and we know right where they're going. Oh, of course. I mean, you, 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 those are places that have really uh, become iconic as far as this race is uh, concerned. I mean, it's a, it was uh, one of the first obstacles, I think, that uh, we encountered uh, at the races here. I mean, there were some rock gardens and stuff, don't get me wrong, but that was the one that was really no most notable, that Howard's Hole down there, that really big mud hole that uh, I know a lot of folks are heading over to right now and, and, and trying to watch. And that's what's really cool about these races. And once we establish them and have been around for a while, they start taking on their own characteristics and their own uniqueness. and. That's one of them, and that's one of them that where everybody wants to go. I know that my daughter, that's the first thing she says. Uh, we got some friends here this weekend. We're heading over the hill to <laughs> Howard's Hole. That's exactly where she wants to go. Yeah, and it's kind of unique, Rodney, because you can walk down the hill, which everybody like likes to walk downhill. Mm -hmm. So you yep. can go down there, see the mud hole, and at the end of the day, you walk down the hill a little further, and you get on the ski lift, and it brings you right back up. And actually, when you look around, you can see half the track from the ski, ski lift itself. And it's a really neat setting, just coming up the mountain, looking at all the different terrain. You get to see some more parts of the track that you wouldn't get to see if you were just walking around. And like you said, everybody already knows about Howard's Mud Hole now. Everybody wants to go there, but it's not only that. We've got some big, giant uphills that are just full of rocks, kind of like Blackwater used to be. I don't know that we have the moon rock situation, no. but we have the rock after rock, rock. after rock after rock. So. Yeah. This is one of them races that the rocks actually grow every year, and I think they're getting <laughs> bigger and bigger. I think you're right. They do. We're growing boulders here in West Virginia. And, you know, uh, another thing that we might want to point out to the uh, race fans and those that are here with us this week about the uniqueness of this start. Generally, we see dead engine starts, uh, whole classes rolling off at one time, but uh, here uh, we see waves of five every 10 seconds. And uh, the, 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 you want to explain the reason for that, or you want me to take that? I mean, uh, that's it's it's unique. It's kind of a throwback. 
Well, you know, I think the five second thing in its live engine is really cool for everybody because, you know, with the big mass start, you never know really know how you're going to do. So they they take the top 20 and they line you up five in a row and then they go from there as how the results are. And you're kind of in a little pack, so you're running with your little five men in a pack, but you can still see the group in front of you. And then scoring on it's a little bit tricky for everybody because if you're in the fifth row, you're starting, I think it was five seconds each time. So, so I think we were, we were closer to maybe 10. Maybe 10. Time. So you're 50 seconds behind. So you're already up in their minute if you catch them. So you gotta got to do a little figuring with the time scoring. But it's neat that you get to actually start live engine because usually it's dead engine. And you're only racing five guys at a time. And you get really get in the mix a little bit more. And the racing tends to be a little bit more intense. It does. And, and you know, we always talk about time adjustments and everything. But with uh, time adjustments only being in that 5 to 10, 15 second range, wherever they may fall right in through there, uh, depending on, you know, each row is a little bit different. But, uh, you know, with those time adjustments, uh, it really makes it confusing sometimes because a person that is leading, and like you said, uh, a top 20 rider could be starting 50 seconds behind the front row guy out there. And that guy out there out front could be physically leading, but somehow or another guy off of row number five is leading the overall. And that's because, like all GNCCs, the time is adjusted. But again, with these uh, classes or these rows starting so close together, I mean, a lot of times it's a, a pretty big advantage to be on a back row because if you catch the guys in front of you, automatically you're already ahead of them on adjusted time. You don't ever have to pass them all day long. Yeah, right, and I think the leaders are kind of tiptoeing their way through there. As the start, when I saw Adam McGill got the start, and I noticed that Walker Fowler kind of was letting the pack go ahead of him. He just was sitting back there in fifth place, and, you know, that's a smart thing to do at a race like this because there's so many rocks and stuff. He's kind of letting those lead four make the new trails or find the lines that are needed looking for the good spots, and he's just going to follow him through this race because this race can be lost on the first lap more than it can be won. Yeah. And on the flip side, though, um, we've got the two-time winner here from Medina, slipping my, his name. Uh, Brian Wolf. Brian Wolf. He's doing this the opposite out there. I think he's going straight to the front right yeah. off the bat. That's, that's kind of the, uh, the checkers or wreckers attitude that he seems to, to adapt here at Snowshoe. And like you said, it, it has paid off for him huge dividends. He had two back-to-back -back wins. I believe it was in 09 and 10, actually, and has even led on uh, several occasions since then. But like we say, checkers or wreckers or breakers. I, I think it's checkers or breakers uh, uh, for him here <laughs> at this particular race. Uh, it's either break the machine in half or finish uh, up front and on the podium. And that's the way Brian rides. And, and, and that's the way. You know, we, we heard uh, talking about it before. Uh, actually, uh, Walker Fowler has ridden this race in the past, and last year he kind of rode it like that and threw basically, I think, threw the championship away uh, at this particular round. If you look back at the big picture, this was the turning point for Walker Fowler and uh, that championship slipping out of his fingers. The big thing about it today is two things could happen here today. He could either have it handed to him or, you know, uh, tighten things up here today if, uh, if maybe something happens to Adam McGill, who's our points leader right now. Or, again, he could find himself even that much further behind the eight ball. But according to uh, folks that we've talked to, that don't seem to be the attitude that he is adapting for this race. It seems that he has actually adapted the attitude of, of uh, you know, I'm in this thing. I could win this. I'm going to try to maintain a little bit better uh, ahead about myself and not break the machine, at least try to finish the race is the main, the main goal today. Winning the race is pretty important, but finishing is probably the most important. Yeah, I think Walker just showed, showed himself on the start right there. He's not afraid to kind of let that front pack sort the, sort the track out, find the good spots or the bad spots. He's just going to hang back in there. And, you know, he maybe he did learn from last year. You have to be in this race to win the championship, and he's going to let the race come to him. He's just not going to let those guys take off and get away where he can't see them. He's just going to follow them around and, you know, let the race kind of sort itself out and try not to put him in self in a bad position to lose points. Wow, look at that view we're looking at here on GNCC Live right now out across the mountaintops uh, here from 4848 Snowshoe Mountain and your chance to win is uh, coming up here today. You could win $250 in AMS oil product. Tweet your podium prediction finishes to uh, hashtag GNCC Live, the top three. It doesn't have to be correct, but if you tweet them and uh, we get them and you hashtag them GNCC Live, we'll draw a name at the end of the show. It could be yours and you could end up with $250 in AMS oil products. Winners will be chosen randomly. 18 minutes into this race now and a few uh, few uh, uh, bits of information for you to, to, to whet your appetite a little bit. We were talking about uh, Brian Wolf there just a moment ago and his uh, checkers or crashers attitude. Here's our leaders out now 
near the power line, the FMF uh, power line. I think the, we have used this as a power point in years past, and that appears to be McClure. McClure, that's what I thought, the number four machine. And wow, I tell you, McClure is a rider that out of the eight runnings that we've had here previous to this uh, Snowshoe GNCC finished in the top five, five times. He's finished on the podium, I think, a couple of different times. And one of those actually came last year where he finished third place. Yeah, and there was Adam McGill was in second place, a little bit behind him. Then there was a little bit of a lag from third, fourth, and wow. fifth. And then Walker Fowler just cut off Chris Forge right wow, there, Rodney. He did. Man, I tell you, that is the FMF PowerPoint we're watching right now. It's a big, long uphill section and with rocks. With raw ro rocks. And it only gets worse as the day uh, progresses. And, you know, we watch from the opposite side of the road. That's a long section coming up to that. And then it only gets gnarlier and gnarlier. We got to see, I think, a little bit of the angle of those guys coming across the road. But I don't think we could quite really uh, realize what they're racing up right now at this particular point of the uh, racetrack. But again, it's a very challenging. Uh, sector of the race course. Yeah, right, and like you said, as you can see when they come across that road, they hit that bump there, and these guys are actually struggling to get up these hills, and all these guys have climbed hills probably their whole life. It's just the loose rock sitting there. You can see some of the rock even starting to come out of the dirt, and it's just going to get gnarlier and gnarlier as the day goes on. Yeah, and you can see where in previous years we've had the racetrack run up that section. They're actually moving it around, trying to save some of that parts of the hill so it uh, has a chance to heal back up, and that's part of the uh, evolution of the ecologicalness of these guys have whenever they're out there marking these trails. Uh, continuing to uh, roll through, I think we're into our XC2 class right now. And you see that nice grass section there, Rodney, it looks like it'd be nice and smooth. Well, <laughs> <laughs> you just know there's big giant boulders in there. These guys have already found that. Yeah, I've, I've actually helped reclaim that before, hanging off the side of a trailer and a mulcher on the side of this mountain. I tell you, man, it is uh, it is uh, not and Here comes our leaders all. back down the other side of the FMF PowerPoint with Jared McClure still leading and Adam McGill just kind of following him along, just staying close enough to pounce if he needs to. But, you know, as in a race like this, it's really fun to be with somebody, you yeah. know, Rodney. That keeps you motivated. You can see what they do if they hit a hold, and you can be ready to hit that bump. And, man, those two have hooked up, and they're taking off. That's pretty unique. Uh, that right there kind of takes me back to the, a lot of the memories. You know, you talk about uh, the Blackwater. A lot of the Blackwater event, you know, ran a lot of works. Look at these guys going right there. That's Walker Fowler back behind. Is that Bithel? There comes Forge now down the roadway. He's trying to get up uh, on the on the rear wheels of Walker Fowler right now. There's Brian Wolf coming after him. Yep. And I think that was Shadron in, in uh, third place. Oh, was it? And I think so. I think it was him. Walker Fowler and then Chris Forge. Ah, so but they're, they're all together. You know, yeah. that little group was good. Was good. The first two guys have a little bit of a lead on them. So 21 and nearly and a half minutes into this race now. There's Johnny Gallagher making his way onto the paved road. That puts him about what eighth, ninth place, I think. Maybe as far back as 10th. But he's got company coming on him hard and fast. We see Kevin Yoho back there on the number 12, a couple of spots back. Hammer down. These boys are trying to make up for some lost ground right now, it looks like. Was that Bithel that just went by possibly that far back? I don't know. I thought that maybe he might have been in the front of the pack, but I've seen another yellow machine going through there. I'm not sure, but this spot right here these guys are at, they've been out there and it's been gnarly, rocky, and rough. And when you hit this paved road, you can kind of like sit back on the seat, take a deep breath, get you a nice drink of water, where somewhere where it's nice and smooth to kind of collect your thoughts and get ready to go again. Well, I think that was Cody Collier, one of our College A riders making his way up. Probably see Wesley Wolf making his way through as well here so shortly as a lot of these guys really far up in the uh, in the lines out there. And uh, both those guys, very fast amateur riders trying to work their way into the XC2 Pro Ra Am ranks here pretty soon. Actually, uh, I think uh, Collier is. It's uh, Wesley Wolf that's uh, the amateur rider in the College A class. But uh, he started up there with those guys coming through about, uh, should be coming through this area as well right now. Lap number one is what we're on. I believe well, this is the west side of the mountain, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Fred Andrews. And um, this is the long side of the mountain. So this will see lap time somewhere in the neighborhood of maybe as much as 25 minutes or so. Other side of the mountain, though, not nearly as long. It'll probably be somewhere in the neighborhood of a 12 minute lap or maybe even as short as 10. Wow, so we're looking at 24 and 5, 10, so 35 minutes is what we're thinking, somewhere in that ballpark? Quite quite possibly. I mean, that's a guesstimation right now, and that's what we're uh, what we're basically doing at this moment is uh, guessing. You know, you said that we had uh, Jay Shadron 
Uh, looked like he might be up there. You know, and Shadron's really given us some glimpses of greatness, and we've seen him ride well in uh, rocky conditions in the state of West Virginia, Masontown before, and I know coming into this one, he had to be pretty excited. This guy right here's got to be pretty excited, though, right now as well. We'll get the uh, full scoop on who that is in the top three is Jared Sneaky State McClure, who's bided his time, paid his dues, is uh, quite possibly due for one, and this could be the one, and this would be a great place for Sneaky Snake to win. He's been on the podium several times. He's been in the top five, at least five out of the eight runnings previous, and I was thinking coming into this weekend, I didn't want to toot too many horns, but, man, I was thinking that uh, Sneaky Snake might be a uh, force to be reckoned with. Back in the number two spot right now as we check it in, it is Adam McGill uh, holding on to that spot. And looking back there to the number three spot, his timing and scoring doesn't seem to, That's Bryson Neal, the number six. And didn't quite catch those uh, other twos. But uh, as soon as we get our electronic timing and scoring up, we'll be able to know. It's uh, a little bit of mud right there. A little bit of mud in some of those places on the racetrack. And uh, that's where... A lot of that is uh, coming up on those machines. Huh? I know that we up here on top of the mountain, it, it seems so nice, Brad. I mean, we've got all this nice pavement and all this concrete and any gravel just about that uh, we want to, to walk on. But these guys, man, the, the lower sections of this hill, we're finding out that there is some uh, soft spots down there. Yeah, you know, right like we said earlier, I think the springs are coming out and there's rocky. And this, this mountain always has a little bit of moisture to it anyways. And they did have a really good winter this year for snow. So some of that is still stuck at the sides of the mountain as water now. And it's just going to get muddier and muddier, I think, as the day goes on. These guys are pretty clean right now. But now they're kind of heading down to the side of the mountain that I believe Howard's Hole's on, right? Yeah, I believe so. So that's where the real mud is going to be. It's... Yeah. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be fun. It's going to separate things. And, you know, that's what the spectators come here to see. And as you're talking about the rain and stuff coming, Rodney, this is one of the places when they said, oh, there's rain in the forecast. When I was looking to come here, I'm like, I don't care how much it rains. <laughs> <laughs> I'm parking on beautiful asphalt up here on this top of this mountain, and it can rain all at once. That, that parking's not a problem here. <laughs> they got a great facility, so it's awesome. No doubt about that. As we check in, it's McClure, McGill, Wolf in the number three spot. Wow, he gotten up into the number three spot. We've seen him in fifth just a little while back before that. Chris Biffle is fourth place. Jay Shadron is the number five ride. Bryson Neal has dropped back now to the number six spot. Walker Fowler's running seven. Chris Borich is eighth. Uh, we could be looking at time adjustments also that might be seeing that. Uh, Borich is eighth. Cole Richardson, XC2 Pro M class leader, is eighth, ninth overall. Wesley Wolf. 10th overall from the College A 16 to 21 year old class. I told you this kid was going to be on fire today. He comes from the mountains of Maryland. Don't be surprised if this young, uh, this young rock uh, racer is not going to be a force to be reckoned with in his top 10 today. Yeah, Rodney, he's probably out there. He's passing a few guys, keeping himself motivated and said, huh, that was easy. Boom, boom. He just keeps on passing and pushing his way to the front. And hopefully he can keep it together and put his rock ride now like he does at home to some good use here this weekend. Here's something interesting. Jared McClure turning a 23 uh, minute, 49 and a half second lap time. Uh, we look all the way back to 10th place uh, with Wesley Wolf, a 24 21. Uh, that's what, about 32 seconds difference from first to like 10th place overall right now. Those lap times are staying pretty consistent, and those guys are pretty close right now in the early part of this race. That's something that we, I think, can traditionally see oftentimes, especially. Uh, on, in these types of conditions and these uh, these types of trails out there because of, I, I think, uh, and you probably mentioned it, uh, riding with somebody and just riding uh, and behind somebody to, uh, to not be the one that's leading the charge out there is oftentimes is a lot easier and uh, a lot funner. And I think that might be what we're seeing out there causing maybe some of these guys a little farther up in the pack. But you got to look at it as well. They also got pretty good start procedures because Cole Richardson was uh, – ranked I think sixth or maybe ninth overall have to look back at the results there but I think he's like he's in the top 10 overall so he got to be on one of the front two rows Wesley Wolf is also a top 20 overall points holder so he got to line up in the top in the first four rows also so that's a pretty good indication these guys are up there they might be more apt to be there to stay today than they would under normal circumstances right yeah Rodney too and I think this snowshoe mountain you know of with the ultimate lines that it has. There's a whole bunch of different lines when it comes to some of these mud holes. So it enables a guy that's starting on their third or fourth row to 
kind of catch up to the front of the pack and then when they come to a mud hole it gives you more lines or more opportunities to go different ways and I think maybe that's also how maybe Wesley picked off a few more guys so quickly because on the first lap everybody's kind of bunched up and not sure where to go and that's where you can make most of your passes of a group of people as quickly. Yeah and we talk about sprint speeds and things like that on the two wheel side of things a lot Fred. Uh, I think sprint speeds are also uh, vitally important uh, oftentimes in the, the ATV side of things also and Wesley is one of those riders that do, does have some good sprint speeds. He races a lot of uh, amateur uh, motocross on the national, the Mountain Dew ATV Motocross National Tour. So he is adapt to, uh, well, number one, uh, uh, all kinds of crazy different types of terrain. He's really one with that machine. So whether it be in the air or on the ground, in the trees, I mean, he, he seems to be one with that machine. So uh, that's going to be uh, one of the big favors for him. So he's got that good sprint speed. He's got the uh, oneness with his machine. And he's got the drive and the heart and the desire of uh, as much of anybody I've ever seen in my life. And I think that we're going to see even greater and bigger things out of this young man as time progresses here in his uh, GNCC and ATV motocross racing career. Yeah, you know, you wouldn't believe how the motocross part of the sport actually flips over to our GNCC side and actually helps you. You know, because you're hitting rocks, you're hitting bumps out there, and it's almost like hitting jumps. And if you're a motocross guy, you like to jump and you have fun, and when you come back to off-road, you're hitting that stuff, and it's making it fun for you and keeping you going. Out on lap number two right now, as these guys are keeping going, Fred Andrew. So a few little tidbits of information for you. As far as this uh, GNCC is concerned here at Snowshoe Mountain, first winners of the Snowshoe GNCC. Remember who that was by any chance of ATV racing? No, I don't. But I could guess. Now I look cheated on your <laughs> sheet right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bill Balance took the win here. Chris Borge took second. Remember Matt Smiley? Yep. He took third place here. Chris Bibble took fourth. And fifth place was Adam McGill. Here's the interesting. Four of the top five that raced here then are still racing here today. And I think we've got like six different total riders that were racing. I see one pro class some nine years ago, eight years ago, nine years ago, that are uh, racing here this weekend. And that's not so much the case on the two wheel side of things. I think that's kind of interesting. Only a couple riders that raced the first uh, GNCC here then are racing now. But uh, Brian Wolf, who is racing with us right now, he also raced here in 2007, our first race. He was racing in 22 plus A class, but he DNF. So he didn't even finish that race. So that was another one of those. <laughs> <laughs> all or nothing for all, Brian Wolf. That's for sure. Nothing. Here's another bit of inform interesting information. Chris Borge has more second place overall finishes at four in 07, 09, 10, and 13 than any other rider. Chris Borge has also finished on the podium five out of eight times of its uh, eight previous runnings here. And Chris Borge has only one snowshoe overall one time in the XC1 class, but has, or excuse me, one time overall, but has won the XC1 class three times. He's gotten beat on adjusted time from XC2 riders. Here we go right now, as we uh, are watching this uh, second loop wrapping up right now, it is Jared McClure still leading this one as we're just over the 31 and a half minute mark now. Uh, it's still Adam McGill in that number two spot, Fred Andrews is Bryce Neal in the number three position. We're seeing about 4.2 seconds between first and second. And now 14, almost 15 seconds back to the number three position starting to open up as Brian Wolf now uh, has not checked in yet, so we'll see if time adjustment kind of moves him up there on uh, Neil. But the way things are looking, I don't think that's going to be the case. I think he might have lost a little bit of time there. Uh, it says he's 12.15 seconds behind, so I think that's probably pretty close to right. That would be the physical uh, distance he has behind him now. But uh, Brian Wolf has now dropped the fourth. Bryce and Neil is your third place ride. So it's McClure, McGill, Neil, Wolf, Chris Bithel now is fifth place overall, checking in. After time adjustments, XC2 Pro M class leader in sixth place, Cole Richardson. Jay Shadron is running in the number seven spot aboard the number nine. Chris Borge drops all the way back to seventh place, and he was running nose to tail with some riders out there. He's in eighth place. Uh, Walker Fowler running back in er, ninth place here overall. And Wesley Wolf still maintaining a top 10 overall, leading that college A class at the end of lap number two here 
from Snowshoe. RV is going to help you go camping with locations across the nation and thousands of RVs to choose from. General RV is the nation's largest family-owned RV dealer. At General RV, you'll save thousands on everything from trailers that sleep the whole family right up to motorhomes that are amazing and so economical to travel in. General RV is the only dealer who can show you this much and save you this much. With a great deal from General RV, you'll discover how much fun camping can be. I'm a sore loser. I'm a sore loser. Losing is not an option for me. Be the best, the best, the best. You have to have the best equipment under the hood. That's why I, I only use Comedic products in my engines. Comedic gasket. Comedic gasket. Comedic gasket. Comedic gasket, a superior quality gasket for those of us who demand the highest level of performance. And welcome back to West Virginia Day here in the great state of West Virginia and the high atop this uh, elevation 4848 for the Snowshoe GNCC. Rodney Tom along with Fred Andrews says uh, we are in the heart of our ATV racing here. 35 minutes nearly into the racing action. Jerry McClure leading Adam McGill, Bryson Neal in third, Brian Wolf in fourth, Chris Bithel rounding out your top five. Cole Richardson in sixth, Jay Shadron in seventh, it's Chris Borich in eighth, Walker Fowler's ninth, and Wesley Wolf, the College A rider, rounds out the top ten. And Fred, we had a chance to catch up with a couple of the riders before the racing got underway today. And I know a lot of folks expect uh, maybe some good things out of Jay Shadron. We've seen good things out of him uh, last year at West Virginia. We saw some good rides out of him at Mason Town. Uh, again here just a few rounds ago and uh, maybe looking for good things out of him again today as we have him up in a uh, top 10 uh, start again here. Uh, it's going to be uh, good and interesting to see how things are going for him and we had a chance to check in with him before the race got underway today. There's Jay Shadron here at Snowshoe Mountain. I've been uh, having a pretty good season here. Still trying to work a few bugs out with a new program and uh, just looking to have a great day here. Been running up front with these guys for a couple races now. Got a podium this season, so uh, hoping to have a great day here and get back up around the box. Well, he's working on it right now, seventh place. These time adjustments right now, physicalness on the racetrack makes it uh, rather uh, deceiving and tough sometimes, but who knows what's going to happen at the end of two hours here, Fred Andrews. And I know Cole Richardson is one of those that uh, certainly doesn't know what happens. And I know that doesn't know what's going to happen, but I know the one thing that he wants to happen, we keep talking about it a lot, he wants to get on that overall podium, and he did do, do just that uh, two weeks ago in Ohio. We got on the overall podium by just a, a couple of seconds on time adjustment, so he got third place as he stole it away from Bryson Neal. But uh, here we are in the great state of West Virginia. He got the start on one of the front two rows. Actually, I think it was row number two, so he's in a much stronger advantage as far as what he has been in the uh, in, in races past, I think, and there's a good possibility they might be able to pull off an overall here today, and I know that's what he's coming into this race in hopes of doing. We had a chance to catch up with him also before today's race. Uh, going into the John Patton, I was really pumped uh, to get started, and uh, throughout the race, you know, we had a second off the hole shot, and I passed Levi Cohen going into the woods, and uh, just kept pushing forward and came up on boards last lap, and he was having some issues, and, you know, I just figured Bryson wasn't too, too much farther ahead, and you know, I just pushed that last lap and came in with a third overall. And, you know, it, it's definitely a confidence booster. It's something I've worked for all year, and uh, it, it happens. So, I mean, it's definitely, uh, if you can do it once, uh, try and do it twice. So, uh, definitely coming in snowshoe, I'm, I'm pumped. We're second row, so I have a little bit of time adjustment on those guys. And maybe if we can put it back up in, on the overall podium again, it'd definitely be great. And it's definitely a good stepping stone for next year since I have to move up to XC1. So uh, definitely get to run up front with those guys and get to learn from them. There you go. So uh, this is this is a good uh, stepping stone, a good opportunity for him to start with those guys, something that he hasn't had the chance to do this season anyway. And it's a good gauge for that rider to be able to start in the top ten like that. It's a lot of pressure, but I think uh, Coltrane might be ready to rise to it. Yeah, I don't think the pressure's really going to get to him, Rodney, because he's been up there riding with these guys all the time. But as you said, this is his best chance if he wants to overall because he started in the second row. He's starting with the best in the business. He's not having to try to catch those guys, waste all his energy to get up there with them. He's already with them, so if he's going to get an overall, I, th I think today would be the 
best or easiest chance he would have at it because he's with them. So yeah. he could follow them around. He, they can carry him, make him faster, make him better. He can learn from them, and he could still try to get that overall that he's looking for. Most definitely, and we'll be keeping an eye on him to watch him wait and see if that's going to be able to happen. And uh, right now we are just looking at a lot of the beautiful landscape of what we uh, see from here high atop this, uh, what's actually, we call it Snowshoe Mountain, with the uh, Snowshoe Mountain Resort up here in the village on top of the mountain. But actually, uh, this uh, particular mountain is uh, known as Cheat Mountain. At, uh, let me get this right here for you. I want to get the exact name for you. It's Thorny Flat. Cheat Mountain at Thorny Flat reaches an elevation of 4,848 feet above sea level and is the uh, second highest point in the state of West Virginia. So I think that's uh, pretty interesting. And uh, this particular resort that we're looking at right now uh, actually began Snowshoe Mountain open to skiing on December 13th in 1974. It was opened by a doctor by the name of Dr. Thomas Doc Brigham. Uh, discovered the mountain and believed it would be a good location for a new ski resort. I think he was right. Uh, the area had been logged from about 1905 to 1960, after which it was abandoned. So, uh, I mean, basically had run of the mountain up here. And, man, they have uh, certainly had their way with it and made a very, very great uh, ski resort here in the eastern United States. You know, we think when you got to go skiing, you think that you got to go out west to the Rockies or someplace like that. No, you don't, man. You come right here to West Virginia. Yeah, for sure. You know, Snowshoes got a great thing for skiing and a lot of people in my area actually talk about coming here for skiing and I'm like to them so well they got great motorcycle races <laughs> there they, you know they didn't even know that they have races here and I think this is a race that all of us look forward to all year long it's kind of cool that it's after this race you have the break because you come up here and you kind of spoil yourself with being able to walk right out of your hotel to your truck and go racing where nobody has to travel very far to get to the track you're not a half hour away in a hotel or all this stuff they got fine restaurants here they've got places to get stuff to drink and there's a lot of stuff for kids to do ride their bicycles oh. around and you know you can kind of trust them in the village because it's all racers down there and everybody kind of looks after each other so it's a great place to come up and have our race before the break it is and uh you know i mean the zip lining and stuff that goes on in the village my kid uh zip lining all day yesterday and probably until he shut them down there last night but uh, have <laughs> and taking the ski lift from the top oh, down to the bottom of the hill down to the big lake they have that you know i've been here since the first race and I really didn't know that the lake was even down there. <laughs> it's so much other stuff to do, I don't I have time. I know, and each year I try to find something new and exciting. I know uh, uh, there's always some new place to discover here at Snowshoe Mountain as we continue to watch our racing action right now. 41 minutes, 25 seconds, the end of the race. This is lap three. Technically this would be lap two because we got a lap on each side of the, the uh, mountain. One long lap, one short lap. but just to keep it straight, we'll call it lap three. 41 minutes into this, and this is the side that, that took them, uh, I think, somewhere in the neighborhood of what we were looking at, around 25, 20, 25 minutes, I think, that first lap, and then we were looking, uh, shoot, that last time. Actually, that went a, a lot quicker than what we expected. I was looking for about 10, 12 minutes or so, but they actually, they turned that east side of the mountain in seven minutes and seven seconds, so they were really turning it up over there, Fred. Wow, now, I think uh, that might slow down a little bit once Howard mud hole kind of gets set in and the mm. holes start to come back up and people That's start to true. get stuck and so th that time may get a little longer but I think the side la lap three here I think this side of the mountain is going to stay quite the same I think you're uh, I think you're right and watching now see there's a big power line we're talking about and uh, I'm not sure on the exact distance but uh, you look down through there that's a long haul and as you go up that hill uh, as you pointed out the rocks start getting uh, bigger as they continue to grow Here's our uh, pro pit section. As you can see, it's also located in pavement. So kind of back to the um, original Blackwater 40 years ago in 1975. We started on pavement. We end on pavement. The pro pits are in the pavement. Uh, so uh, this is a true celebration of a uh, great race. And I, I think we're getting as close as we can without actually being able to go back and, and run in Davis, West Virginia, Fred. Yeah, and I think actually this resort, the atmosphere is a little bit more people friendly here you know the, the pit area is a whole bunch bigger and before it was kind of scrimp it were all crammed in the little streets and stuff and this is a lot bigger facility and you know with the uh, amount of people that we have now compared to when blackwater was 
as almost all the races back then, all our, we've almost outgrown those. So we've come to a bigger <laughs> place like this, and now we've got That's the extra room and give us more. That's hard to believe as we check out some of the uh, Blackwater footage, some previous Blackwater footage. I think this comes from 1988, the Blackwater 100. But uh, uh, yeah, that, that is so, so neat. Just l reflecting back on all that. There's, uh, you might r recognize it. Well, let's listen to the audio. They got some really cool commentary with this all. If it isn't mechanical, it's physical failure that will get you at this race. But we're not going to bore you too long with this scene. We're going to head down to the Route 93 River Crossing. That's where the excitement is. Now you'll see why this is the most popular spot on the entire track of the Blackwater 100. The people on the bank here are called mud fleas, as we said before, and they're always ready to give a hand to the racers. as we watch these guys uh, in this, man. I'm sure it brings back a lot of memories for you. This is uh, from, uh, I think, 1988 footage. We see the ATCs and the ATVs both out there, the four-wheelers. <laughs> we see the original mud fleas as well. Yeah, Rodney, these people just, they're not afraid to help you. Whatever it takes to get you through the mud, they grab your bike, you slide down, they're pulling it up, they're <laughs> sliding down, and they had such a good time there, Rodney. They most certainly did. You know, it was funny we were talking about the size. It's hard to believe that if we were to try to take GNCC back to uh, Snow, or excuse me, back to Davis, West Virginia, and try to relive and revive the, the original Blackwater course and trail, how hard it would probably be just from the simple size of that. But man, look at the conditions that these guys. Now, I will say we don't have river crossings like this here at Snowshoe, but we have, I'm sure, some uh, areas of the racetrack that are probably as technical and as challenging. Yeah, Rodney, for sure. You know, we've got the steep hills, we've got the rocks. We may not have this big river crossing, but Howard's Hole's really bad, and there's a few other springs, I'm sure, that have come up. So we've got all the same elements. I mean, some of our hills are probably tougher than some of their hills back then, so it's kind of a wash that way, but by no means is this any less challenging than what the Blackwater was. No doubt. And one thing we got to point, whoa, look at that. And one thing we, <laughs> 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 if you get to watch this video, I think this is some footage you can find on YouTube also. But uh, man, these guys, they literally got in it. There's some ATCs, the uh, three wheelers. But uh, here's some interesting facts for you on the uh, Blackwater, by the way. I've went and uh, dug up a, a few interesting uh, tidbits of this. The first ATC uh, race for, uh, ATVs and three-wheelers was held in 1983, and the, the ATV portion was only ran 11 times. The first winner of an ATV race at the Blackwater 100 was Donnie Scud Huggins, and uh, the first ATV quad, the four-wheeler that, that won, was in 1985 by Jeff Bernard. Jeff Bernard also won again in 1986. Uh, in the ATV side of things, there are only three multiple uh, multi-time winners of the Blackwater and those include Bob Sloan, who won it three times in 1990, 91, and 92. Jeff Bernard, who won in 85 and 86. And a name from around the Pennsylvania area, and if you're into the scoring thing, you might know this guy, Roy Danes, John Danes' brother, who does the e-score and the my laps and stuff. Well, Roy Danes won it twice in 87 and 89. Honda won on an ATV, a Blackwater, nine different times on an either ATC or an ATV. Suzuki won it two times so there were only two different brands that actually won as we continue to watch some of this uh, footage here uh, also barry hawk was the last atv racer to win the uh, blackwater 100 on a uh, atv and it was the fourth of his 68 overall total wins and uh, barry hawk uh, blackwater win was part of a three race win streak that year which included the brown jug the burr oaks and the blackwater back to back to back that year but he didn't win the championship but uh, he did, of course, win the Blackwater that year. You know, Rodney, you look back at some of the races like that, there's certain races that you really, really want to win, and Blackwater was one of them. You know, it's one of the ones that is like no other. You know, like Loretta Lenz is always a race everybody mm -hmm. looks forward to. Everybody always looks forward to the first race of the year. Well, now <laughs> it's snowshoe. You know, everybody hey. looks forward and wants to be a winner here. And as you can see here, these guys just weren't afraid back in the day. They just started to go up there, and they just helped the mud flea would grab hold yeah. of them, and here they come. It was all based on faith, I think, for a lot of those guys. And, man, they would just launch that thing up. 
and try to get out of the way. And you know the machines were built like tanks back then too to be able to withstand the uh, the the torture that was handed out to those things during the time. So you got to hand it off to the manufacturers that really worked hard and even some of the uh, then uh, aftermarket manufacturers that were beginning to start to uh, manufacture the products that would make it easier for them to traverse trains like this. Yeah, and I'm sure, you know, last time I was at Blackwater was 1993. With last year they did have it and some of the Japanese came over from Honda and Yamaha and all them. They were there. I think they were surprised to see what we actually did with their ATVs. You know, they had no idea that we take them out there in the mud and do stupid things like that with them. <laughs> but, you know, it was fun, and that's all we knew. Jared McClure continuing the lead as we watch vintage footage of Blackwater 100 Racing here on RacerTV.com. And we want to say thanks to uh, those folks that supply that uh, type of great footage. It's certainly uh, uh, an opportunity for you to check it out yourself. Lots of uh, Blackwater footage on uh, YouTube. Uh, you can find some as well on racertv.com, but most of it you're going to find there on YouTube as lots of folks have been. Oh, looks like we got ourselves a lead change at the 49 and a half minute mark, Fred Andrews. And Adam McGill, I think, might be uh, the man out on point now, Fred Andrews. Yeah, Ronnie, looks, looks like he's definitely taking control now, whether he was just following Jared McClure around there a little bit, kind of feeling his way around, getting comfortable with what he's doing. and. He's made the pass, and right now he's going up here, the FMF PowerPoint hill climb, and he's those two have still got a lead, but up, somebody's catching them. Wow. That, uh, we had Neil and Wolf. That might be Wolf on the uh, hammer right there. Chris Bistol was also not far off I think pace. that was Walker Fowler in fourth place, so really? it looks like maybe physically. he's moved up. Looks like it was number two. Wow, so that's physically up. He was on time adjustment back in the ninth place position overall at the end of that second loop, the short loop on the east side of the mountain. It's amazing, Rodney, how that pack is still so tight like it is. Up, all those guys are pushing themselves, so maybe that pack pushing themselves like that is actually going to push them a little closer to the front, too. Very and maybe, you know, Adam McGill sensed that, and he says, you know, it's time for me to go. i got to get some more distance. Out in the pro pits we go now as the McGill Mafia pretty pumped and pretty psyched. McGill will now stop into the pits. There comes McClure. He's in for a quick gas stop as well. Board the number four machine. They're getting on it. Is that McClure? Or is that Neil just ahead of him right there? That I think it's McClure. It. Okay, Neil just went through. There's Walker Fowler now in the uh, what would be, looks like fourth place. There's Chris Borch in, and he's getting a fresh pair of goggles as well. Adds some gas. They're spraying that machine off, trying to make sure it does not hold a lot of that mud and trap in that heat. There is... Uh, the Cole train himself, Cole Richardson, that XC2 Pro Am class rider. Again, he is sixth place overall after time adjustment. And he started on row two out there. So he is in the thick of things. And, you know, he's got to be thinking right now that, you know, it's not a matter of class thing. I'm racing with the guys that I started with. And it's it's no there's no classifications right now for, for Cole Richardson. It's just a matter he wants to win race. Yeah, Rodney, right now it's just him against everybody else. It's, it is no I'm in a underclass from you, the Pro-Am class. I'm not in the big class. He is in the big class now. And here comes our leaders back down the hill after the quick pit stop. And I was kind of wondering, Rodney, when they were spraying that water, if they weren't actually spraying the water on the brake system on those bikes because they didn't seem like they were spraying it to the front. It seemed like he was kind of back to where the rear brake is. But maybe that's something we could find out from the pit row. But there goes Adam McGill. He's throwing some tissues off his hand or some, some paper towels. He's just trying to get his grips nice and clean so he can hold on real tight. And these guys are on this road right now now, and there's Walker Fowler. Looks like he's in fourth place, maybe behind um, Brian Wolf, you know, and like he's <laughs> looking back at him and ben, trying to find out what's going up on. There. Yeah, he's we're from Ohio, and I got a, such a hard time with Brian Wolf's name. Wow, looking across the valley, the mountain right now, the wind's starting to pick up, Fred Andrews, and the clouds starting to thicken up quite a bit. We're not seeing any rain out on the trail uh, cameras right now, but uh, it does not look far away. And uh, wow, at the one hour mark in this race, can you imagine these riders already out here, the stage set the way that it is? What could happen out here if it starts raining right now? Man, them hills right now, they're slippery enough with them rocks being dry. When them rocks to get wet, man, them hills are really be slippery. And the whole track's a different track, Rodney. They figured out how to work it now, the way it is in the conditions that it is. But once that rain hits it, that's a totally different animal out there. And these roads, even them roads are gonna really be slippery, let alone all them little uphills and downhills and you know all the 
water running off the hills is going to come down into Howard's Hole and make it even deeper and wetter. And, you know, it's just going to make some more excitement, and that's what we want. We want up here on the top of the mountain. We're ready for some excitement. Well, Sneaky Snake, as we told you, is a uh, man that has been in the thick of things. He's been on the podium a couple different times. He's been in the top five, five out of the eight previous runnings here. Could he be looking for his first ever win in overall in the ATV racing and doing it here in the mountains of West Virginia? Man, we are just uh, moments away from knowing more about that. Actually, quite a few moments, I guess we could probably technically say, but uh, about a little over an hour. But man, this is gonna be fun to watch to see whether or not he's able to uh, pull it off. But the big question is, is Adam McGill gonna be able to uh, do what he needs to do today? Will Walker Fowler be able to maintain and do what he needs to do to stay in the hunt in the thick of things as far as this championship is concerned? And I guess another big question for a lot of folks, can Chris Porch turn things around here? We saw him do it a year ago. He got the big break there last year. I mean, all it would take is both the leaders in points of uh, Fowler and uh, McGill to have problems out here. And, and all of a sudden, uh, Chris Porch is right back into the thick of this championship. Yeah, right. And I think Chris Porch gives it his all every race. He's really not worried about the championship at this point. He just wants to win races and get back to being the Chris Porch that he has been the last few years. Wow, look at that. Uh, you can see the rain is moving in across the way right there right now. And uh, we're being joined in studio right now by Moose Racing, Steve Van Zylen with us right now. It's uh, Dutchie in the house with us. Dutchie, what's going on, buddy? Hey, good to be here. Good to have you, man. You need to get that mic a little bit closer to your face, man, so we can hear you. There, there you go. go. There we go. Is that good? A little bit better? I think, I think it's a little better. A little bit. Better. A little bit. A little bit. And, uh, well, Dutchie, welcome, man. Welcome to GNCC again, and welcome to Snowshoe. I know that uh, Moose Racing, uh, a big part of GNCC Racing itself, and a big part of uh, the event this weekend. Yeah, thanks. We uh, we love coming here. We've got the big 18-wheeler set up down right right by the finish. Um, all our products on display, and a bunch of uh, our racers out there now competing and hoping to get on the podium, and everything's good. We, we love being here. We love being part of the GNCC family. I know that that is that is true, and you guys. I know since I've been coming around, been a part of things down there, and uh, uh, you know, I always say the official attire of GNCC Moose Racing Apparel and stuff. I mean, that that's one thing you guys have got as we check in. I think some of our leaders coming through here right now, if I'm not mistaken, or at least some really fast guys out here on the trail, Fred Andrew. <laughs> yeah, those are definitely the leaders, Rodney. It's it's hard to tell because this is one of the few sections besides the road that where they can actually be nose to tail and there's really not any rocks right there. So those guys are really flowing it, trying to catch up to those two leaders. You know, Adam McGill, he may be leading right now and Jeremy McClure may be with him, but this pack seems like they've gotten a little, little hornet's nest going. They're trying to push forward. They most certainly are. And there is uh, one of our uh, sweep riders. I think that was our 1982 National Hair Scrambles champ uh, and sweep master Tommy Harris making his way around the trail. He has uh, been a part of Blackwater races in the past and Steve Van Zylen as we celebrate ninth running here eight years i gotta ask you is uh have you ever ridden the blackwater were you a part of blackwaters back then no unfortunately that was before my time but uh i was actually talking with dick burleson this morning about it and um you know he had the pleasure of racing it and it sounded like a pretty special place yeah <laughs> now you have had the pleasures of racing this race before right i have yeah yeah i enjoy racing this one it's challenging and it's, it's a lot of fun it puts you puts you to the test you know does most certainly while we watch these guys go by steve real quick uh moose shoot racing we talk a lot about that moose utility man for those guys that do a lot of the trail riding and stuff and these types of terrains man you guys have got all kinds of cool stuff we have everything yeah we have the racks the bags um when the weather's bad we have snow plows um, anything you need to for your utility quad or ut utility machine you know, you name it, we have it. And you're doing side-by-side uh, -side stuff too, right? A lot of side-by-side -side stuff. And that, and that market just doesn't stop, keeps growing. <laughs> we have uh, anything you need for those as well. Wheels, tires, through to roofs and windshields and wow. accessories for the beds. You know, anything you'd need. Ever-expanding moose utility and moose race. And glad to have you guys on board with us here. And uh, proud to say that uh, you are the official racing attire of GNCC Racing, man. Thank you. We're proud to, uh, to be the, have that title. Now, i got to ask you a question. Do you, do you have a uh, prediction, podium prediction? We do our Amsoil predictions, and as the <laughs> rain starts to fall right here, That's right now. I was going to say, Rodney, the rain is here, so 
Everything these guys have learned has been thrown out the wow. window. It's a whole different animal out there right now. It is. Uh, if you tweet, uh, have you tweeted your podium predictions for your chance to win $250 in Amtool product? No, I need to do that. Well, it, if you do so, make sure you hashtag that GNCC Live. All right, and I got to ask, what's your podium predictions for today? Okay, I'm going with Sneaky Snake for the win. I, I feel, I'm feeling it today with this rain coming in, these slippery rocks, that's him. And uh, Bryson Neal for second, and then ooh, third's going to be a tough one. Third's going to be real tough. <laughs> wow. Uh, that's really sure going that. out of the limb. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you ran out of moose riders right there off the top of your head, didn't you? <laughs> but you know what's really neat about that, Steve, is those are two likely riders that could do just that. Uh, I, coming into this event, uh, was thinking about that because I'd done a lot of information research, and I've been watching uh, Jared McClure as of late and his progression. I, I, I remember he comes from Pennsylvania, and he's used to Rocky Mountainous type uh, racing. And uh, with the consistencies that we've seen, the confidences he's been able to build over the course of this season alone, let alone the years leading up to this, I think you're right. I, I, I was kind of anticipating a, kind of an upset like that and something surprising. And it wouldn't surprise me a bit either to see uh, Sneaky Snake take that win. And Bryson Neal, I think you're in there as well. I mean, that's, that's a legitimate guess as well. But uh, yeah, who, do you, who are you going to go out on a limb and say third place? Johnny Gallagher, right? Johnny Gallagher would be good. It'd <laughs> be great to see him, you know. Uh, maybe Chris Barch. I'm thinking Chris is going to be there. Yeah, Chris Yeah, Chris is going to be a tough one to beat. He's got a lot to make up for and a lot to prove, I think, right now. And, uh, you know, so struggling, as much as many struggles as he's had, he's really come a long way with that program. He has. And I think, you know, uh, Jared McClure and Bryce Neal, as Dutchie said, he's put, they've put themselves in the position to be in the top ten right now, in our, or the podium. They're in second and third. They're where they need to be, and that's really important in what we do. You know, if those guys are outside the top ten, I would think Dutchie's just pulling his moose rider <laughs> card on us. But <laughs> his moose riders are there, and yeah. so they're right where they need to be, and uh, they know what it takes. And like I said, it's starting to rain right now, so it's going to be a little bit different for the, everybody out there. And, it may sort it out a little bit more. It may help some, but it's going to be interesting. I agree. We're now an hour an hour into this race on lap four, which should be uh, our second full lap. But again, uh, we're back over on the east side of the mountain, the short side. We saw seven-minute lap time last time around, I think. Uh, leaders checking in last time at the end of the lap. No, we're on the long side. I'm sorry. We're on uh, lap four. Oh. Okay, so Adam McGill has checked in in the lead. We do, uh, we, we have checked in, so we are on the short side. Adam McGill, Jared McClure, Bryson Neal, one, two, and three right now. Walker Fowler is fourth after time adjustments. Brian Wolf is fifth. Chris Borch in sixth. Jay Shadron on seventh. Chris Bithel is eighth. Cole Richardson is ninth. Kevin Yoho rounds out your top ten. GNCC Live continues on racertv.com right after this. Trail. Amsoil for any engine. Love racing, all kinds of racing. How about pro motocross, flat track, road race, ATV, GNCC, supermoto, enduro cross. Well, we've got what you're looking for. Welcome to the Racer X Show with Greg White, presented by Chaparral Motorsports. 
new every Tuesday on RacerTV.com. This Racer TV live broadcast is brought to you by Amsoil, the first in synthetics. By Rocky Mountain ATV MC, get ready. By Maxxis Tires, find your flow. And powered by Yamaha Generators. And welcome back to GNCC Live. Rodney Tomlin along with uh, Fred Andrews, also Megawatt Matt Watson and Dutchie Stevie Van Zylen in the booth with us from Moose Racing here high atop Snowshoe Mountain as we overlook uh, the great state of West Virginia celebrating the birthday today, 152 years old as the rains are falling here. And we're taking a look at the uh, pits. We need uh, the pit crew of Chris Crossan to report to uh, the uh, finish line, please. The pit crew of Christopher Cross, and please report to the finish line. And all of a sudden, it's a whole new ball game out there on the <laughs> racetrack. How slippery does that hill look right now, Rod? You can see all the water's running off those rocks, and it's just like icicles on that hill. And you can see them coming off on this road right here. They're trying to be gentle on the throttle, and they're just sliding everywhere. And man, it's uh, <laughs> it's gone from probably a really fun track to, oh no. Yeah. <laughs> And, you know, uh, coming into this one, 40 years ago, it was the Blackwater. 152 years ago, this state became a state in West Virginia. And Father's Day weekend was a celebration with uh, the Blackwater. It's Father's Day weekend this weekend, man. You, you got to think something big and monumental is going to be taking place here today. And now that the rain is starting to fall, not only fall, it's starting to pour down. And, uh, you know, we heard folks saying we can see as much as four inches of rain. I don't think that's the case. So I don't think we're going to see no four inches of rain. I, I don't want to over speak too quickly, but regardless, the rain is starting to pour right now. And the, the face of this race is changing so rapidly, so quickly. The, the, the things that you got to watch out for, maybe not necessarily the leaders making mistakes. Now that will be one, but most importantly, I think is the bottlenecks that are going to develop out here on this racetrack. And when the bottlenecks develop under these conditions, the alternate routes are also going to change because some of those steeper areas that you might try to get through or, or muddier areas, uh, lower areas that you might get to try to get through are all of a sudden going to become impassable. So your uh, options, I think, are going to be limited as far as getting around those bottlenecks now, too. So that's going to be a new f another factor that's going to help change things around a little bit. Yeah, Rod, and, and when you're coming to that hill, you're always looking ahead, but now you're really gonna have to be looking ahead because if the line you want to go on has got people in it, you got to make that decision. Are they stuck or think, can I get by them? Or, okay, I'm gonna take the alternate line. And some of the alternate lines aren't the quickest lines, you know, of course, but is it better to go the long way and not get stuck? Or are there some of these people gonna start pressing their luck a little bit and maybe going through some of that tall grass, hoping they can miss that rock or two that's in there. And it's gonna get interesting that way is, and then two, like you said, even though you're following a guy up a hill, you think everything's going good, a lapper at any time can have a problem, hit a rock and lose his momentum, then you run into him and then the leaders or the people behind you could have taken that alternate lap or that alternate line and pass you. So it's, it's really gonna make things really exciting. It's gonna be more mind boggling on those guys out there. I think you're absolutely right. And we are four laps down now, working on lap five for our XC1 Pro Class riders. An hour and nearly seven minutes into this race, our overall top 20 looking like Adam McGill, Jared McClure, Bryson Neal, one, two, and three, Walker Fowler in fourth, Brian Wolf in fifth, Chris Borich back in sixth, Chris Bithel is seventh, Jay Sadron in the number eight spot, Cole Richardson, who leads the uh, XC2 Pro-Am class, is ninth place overall, Kevin Yoho rounding out the top 10. X, or excuse me, college A, 16 to 21 year old class leader. The uh, number 741 is Wesley Wolf. He is the 11th place overall. Is currently your top amateur or non XC1 or XC2 Pro Am class racer. Johnny Gallagher is 12th place overall for the number 16 machine. 13th place, the number 15, Brent Sturdy Vant. Uh, the 14th place, Randy Hamilton aboard the number 20. He is second place in XC2 Pro-Am class racing. Uh, 15th place overall, Cody Collier, who is third in XC2 Pro-Am class racing. 16th overall, the 18, Marty Christophson. He's fourth in XC2 Pro-Am class racing. 17th overall, the 14, Landon Wolfel, LW as we call him. He's 12th place overall. He's uh, 17th, excuse me, he's 17th overall, 12th in the XC1 Pro class. Josh Merritt, the number 13, he is uh, 13th in the XC1 Pro Class, 18th overall. AJ Koontz, the 407, 
XE2 Pro Am fifth place is 19th overall. Blake Tornes, the number 31 XE2 Pro Am class sixth place, he is 20th overall. By the way, Matt Hanna, who would be one of those riders that did not start in one of those front four rows, he is running back in 21st place overall right now. He is your vet A28 plus class leader. Just an FYI for you as the rains have not subsided any. They have not let up any. It is a steady driving rain that is starting to fall down here on top of Snowshoe Mountain, it looks like, Fred Andrews. Yeah, Rodney, we're sitting here in the booth and we're kind of on a nice level spot, but we've got the hard asphalt in front of us and it's, a, it's at like a little ramp and the water's just running off the top of the hill down to the lower section, so you can think of what it's doing out there on the track, you know. Most of the track's on the side of the mountain on the hills on the ledges like, so all the water's running off, it's hitting that ledge, and then it's running off hitting the next ledge, so there's no way these guys are going to get around it anymore. They're going to well, most likely have no goggles on here in a little bit right. because no matter how hard you try in the rain, there's there's just no way you're going to keep your goggles dry. And then you got on the flip side of it, you got to start worrying about getting mud in your eyes. So you got to start letting guys get a little bit of further ahead of you so you don't get hit by the mud. And man, it's just the whole game face has really, really changed. One good thing about it from our perspective is these bikes will be a lot cleaner now. <laughs> I thought you were going to say that we're inside the booth and it's not raining on us. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't want to say that because the wind's starting to kick up and it might start raining on us here in a minute. But uh, regardless, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, watching right here at this section of the track I was going to mention to you, um, so far, I mean, riders seem to be getting up and down this section of the track. Uh, again, our PowerPoint is what we're calling this, and uh, I, honestly, I, it is an FMF PowerPoint, but I got to think that there might be some steeper and, and, and tougher hills to get up out there, but I, though it's not looking bad right now, I think this is one that could get worse as, the as time goes on here. Yeah, Ronnie, for sure. I mean, these hills are so steep that in order for us to get cameras, there's no way <laughs> that we can get them all the way down the side of the hills to most of the steeps to most of the steep parts and as far as getting down the hills they're going to get down on the bottom no problem you know one way or another where they're tumbling or whatever but they're going to get down there Rodney and I think the hills are definitely going to get worse and when it's raining like this it does clean the bikes up more but then you also got more potential of the water getting into the air filter Very because it becomes real soupy and now there's a lot of water splashing up so it's kind of cool that it cleans your bike but then it's a bigger problem that where's all that water going when you're hitting it. Very true. So uh, lap five is what we're working on right now. A lot of things to think out for, a lot of things to watch out for. So now, not only do you have the terrain to, to try to battle the rocks that, you, that can break you in half, the downhills, the uphills, now you got to throw in the uh, the weather. And uh, the weather, I tell you, uh, what could be the biggest variable from this point on. Uh, let's take a look at how things are shaping up at the midway point of this uh, race here today just a little now over an hour and 11 minutes into this race and this midway report brought to you by your good friends at mid-state chevrolet <laughs> where they stack them deep and sell them cheap you missed that guy rodney he was coming down the hill right there and just like this guy's probably gonna do the same thing I was on the right hand side of the screen he lost his footing and boom down <laughs> he went <laughs> yeah, so yeah oh. we get to watch the spectators as well so you guys watch that keep an eye on that we're going to check in with the classes right now as we look at the uh, xc1 pro class now adam mcgill jerry mcclure bryson neal walker fowler brian wolf sixth place chris board seventh place is chris bithel jay shadron is eighth kevin yoho and ninth johnny gallagher rounds out in the top ten Go to the XC2 Pro M class now. The Cold Train got now. Wow, look at this unadjust. Well, that might not be adjusted time. We're just going to say right now, Randy Hamilton is second uh, on board the number 20. Third place is Cody Collier in the number four spot. Marty Christopherson on his Honda. Fifth place, AJ Koontz aboard the 407. Uh, we got the sixth place ride of Blake Tornes aboard the number 31. Seventh place, Levi Cohen aboard the 28. Eighth place then is Tristan Huffman. Ninth place to 23 of Wes Kinsley. And rounding out your top 10, 807. Michael Lancaster here in this uh, XC2 Pro-Am class. The College A class, Wesley Wolf, who is running uh, right at a top 10 overall right now. The 741 machine. Wow. I think this might be the case. Six minutes and 31 seconds is what Wesley Wolf is leading the rest of that College A class by right now as uh, Greg Covert is running in second place on board the 701. 
Third place, J.D. Brown aboard the number 46. In fourth place, Kenny Schick. Fifth place, the 48, Christian Meyer. Sixth place, the 24, Chris uh, Kevin McCohen. Seventh place, 707, Anthony Barnes. Eighth spot, Noah Landis aboard the 602. Ninth place, Brandon Eichert. And rounding out the top 10, Corey Silverthorne, the 553. That's your College A. College B, 16 to 21. Blake Meyer leading Tanner Walker. About five, call it six seconds, separating first and second right now. Charles Dawson is third place. Jeremy Hill running in the number four position. In the number five spot, Chandler Burner riding the 546 place. Andrew Manback, seventh place, 274. Dustin Atkins in eighth place, the 352. Tyler Creel, ninth spot, 569. Nick Mastrangelo. Mastrangelo. Uh, rounding out the top 10 is Brandon Barnes at number 214. As we look next to the Junior A 22 plus class, Nathan Hornacek leading after three, a 14 second lead over the 913 of Dustin Pickett. Dwight Pollard, the 706, running back in third. Michael McAvoy, the 33, is fourth. Fifth spot, Simon Bissell aboard the 53. Sixth place, Brett Hinkey aboard the 896. Seventh place, Stevie Covert aboard the 702. It's eighth place, number 313, Ben Brink. Ninth spot, the 37 of Matthew King. And rounding out the top 10, the 491 of Cole Williamson as the rain continues to pour down now. The Junior B 22 plus class we take a look at. 818, Cody Wolford now leading by about 35 seconds over the 77 of Eric Holyfield. The 824 of Dustin Dickerson running in third, fourth place, Chris Riddle in fifth spot. The 81 of Robert Mapp. Sixth place, Chris Wittenberg aboard the 404. Seventh place, PP DeMarco. Actually, Ben DeMarco, we call him PP. Riding the number 450. Eighth place, Jay Turner, the number 363. 390, or the 30, shoot. Ninth place then, the 171, Alan Tuttle. Ninth place, excuse me, 10th place then is the 357 of Brett Fike. I'll get through that uh, Junior B class as the rain's starting to pour into our race day studios right now. We got the Bet A28 plus class we look at with Matt Hanna leading Jeff Pickett. Matt Hanna, a former top XC2 Pro-Am class Raider, dabbled, racer, dabbled in the XC1 class some as well. Jeffrey Pickens, an XC1 Pro class racer up until a few years ago. Matt Pierce, same thing, was an XC2 and XC1 class rider. These are your three top three in this uh, uh, Bet 8 28 plus class now. They have a three minute lead over fourth place, the 409 of Kenneth Kelly. Fifth place, the 806, Dustin Hendershot. Sixth place, the 269 of Pierre Denal. Seventh place, 621, Travis Nichols. Eighth spot, West Stone. Ninth place, 211, Tom Jansky and Walter Shoemaker rounds out your top 10. That was your vet B 30. Uh, that was your vet A 28 plus. Your vet B, I'm jumping too many buttons here. Let's press it one more time. Adam Reed rounding, or leading, I should say, in the B 30 plus class. Your media all stars racer, those Lone Star components on it. 671, Dale Banson runs in second. In the number three spot, Todd Muscala. We call him the Marlboro Man out there, more than number 64. It's a joke. <laughs> but for good reason. Fourth place, 703, Daniel Webb. In fifth place, the 912, Philip Thayer. Sixth place, the 61, of Jeremy Gouchard. Seventh place, 629, John Hanna. Eighth place, 711, Brian Locke. Ninth place, 209, Charlie Rogers. And 377, Gregory Westfall. Honestly, I tell you, Todd Muscala, he carries around one cigarette, he said, with him <laughs> to raise him in case something happens if he gets really frustrated. That's why I call him the Marble Man, but no other reason. He, he does it more for a joke for than anything. But uh, nonetheless, uh, senior AB 38 plus class, John Glotta, the 41, your class leader with a 29 minute, 10 second lap time there. A 55 second lead over Rusty Repass, the 705, uh, who is second. Third spot, the 42, Aaron Delancey. Fourth place, the 636, Mark Batson, another media all-stars rider out there. He's got three laps in right now. Uh, John Gower working on lap three. Can-Am rider number four, 17 is fifth, and the uh, sixth place ride is 358 of Ian Buckingham. Ian Buckingham. And that is uh, your uh, Mid-State Chevy Midway Report. Want to say thanks to the folks at Mid-State Chevrolet located at the uh, Flatwood exits off of I-79, right in the heart of West By God, Virginia, that celebrates 152 years. And could these be tears of joy that, that maybe Mother Nature and West Virginia are raining down on us right now? If it is, she's squalling right now because I think the rain is getting uh, heavier and heavier. We say good day to uh, C. Van Zyland from Moose Racing. Want to thank him for 
being on hand with us. You might want to pull that TV in. The runner is starting to puddle up underneath here right now. And um, be sure and stop down Mid-State Chevy, Mid-State Chevrolet. Pick up your next new car, truck, or van. That's where I'm headed here in a couple of weeks. And my daughter's turning 16, Fred Andrews. <laughs> I'm not I got twin boys. They'll be 15 and a half in December, and they're already talking cars. And I'm like, oh, no, two of them? <laughs> <laughs> I thought I had it rough with uh, with mine. But, yeah, you do. You have uh, two. You got twins, right? That's yes, sir. Wow. Uh, I guess I do have it a little better off than what you do in that department anyway. <laughs> they're getting one vehicle and they're going to share it. There you go. I like the way Dad thinks, man. And that gives them a chance to become even that much closer, right? Yeah, that <laughs> way they can hit each other going down the road and who knows what's <laughs> going to happen. But, no, I think you're right about the rain. The rain's just coming down and coming down. And we've been fortunate here these last few years. We've had really great racing. The weather's been good. We really haven't had any real... Mother Nature Not like things this. happening. No. Well, she's here now, and it's still a great thing. You know, we're here to race. We're going to race no matter what. These quad guys, they can take anything on. And the, the bike guys are the ones right now. They're thinking, <laughs> oh, man. Well, because, the good you know, because when you start a race like they did, and it was okay, you're going, and it starts raining. Oh, well, you're already into the race. It's going on, yada, yada, yada. But the, motor, the bike guys are... Oh, man, it's going to be so muddy. You know, they haven't <laughs> even started. But they're in the same shoe, Rodney. They're all here to take on whatever elements they can and it's going to make the racing more exciting for everybody and we always say or i always do uh -oh. it's never over until it's over but this even throws that even to be, even be truer yeah know? yeah very very true worse. a lot of variables i mean there are so many variables throw in the rain and all of a sudden I, you don't throw in just one more variable you just double the variables i think because you add water on everything that uh that could take place here on Snowshoe Mountain, and then all of a sudden you got yourself a uh, really <laughs> interesting situation starting to develop. It is still Adam Miguel out front uh, leading this one, my friends, and uh, our good friend, of course, Jared Sneaky Snake McClure in position right where he wants to be to uh, possibly take an overall uh, win in his first, his first ever as, um, you know, Fred, this, you know, we talk about, and I say this, and I say it, wow, look at that. That water is starting to get deep. But I say it a lot, from around the globe, from all walks of life, the GNCC Racing Nation welcomes all. And from the moto world, the motocross world, of course, we welcome a uh, not only a mo great motocross racing star, motor, motor, motocross racer, but also one of my racer TV co-hosts when we go to do motocross things at Loretta Lens and uh, the Mini Olympics and things like that. We're talking about none other than a former AMA Horizon Award winner. Sean Hackley has joined us here in the booth today. And Sean, your first GNCC experience, number one at the toughest and most unique event that we've got all year long. And number two, it starts raining, brother. What are you thinking? <laughs> I'm so excited. They have a really great venue here. You know, it's really come to see and everything together. My first GNCC experience, and I'm really excited. And, and uh, now it's raining. <laughs> and surprisingly, I'm more excited about that just because I'm here to have more fun, and I love the mud. There you go. Now, Sean, I know that you're uh, a top rider out on the uh, circuit. Uh, you've had some bouts with injury on and off again. How's things been going for you this year so far? Have you been able to ride any? Um, trying. <laughs> honestly, uh, honestly, this year I've probably ridden less than 25 times. So really? Yeah, just battling some injuries and stuff like that. But, you know, I'm still over the race, so I'm enjoying every chance I get on time get time on the bike and what's really cool is you're riding the Husqvarna Barna brand bike yes. and it's one of the bikes that a lot of guys are choosing to race now out here in the in the off-road yes it's a great bike I mean you know we have the electric start the Brembo brakes hydraulic clutch you know there's nothing more you can really ask for that comes stock in a motorcycle I know and it's not only great for motocross but Fred Andrews you know well as anybody it's great for the off-road racing world too yeah Rodney it sure is you know our whole arrive and ride team is on Husqvarna's and we've got that Davala and Nick Davis racing the Husk of Honors in the pro classes, so we're really having a lot of luck with them. And right now, I think this might be our leaders coming up yep. here. But I was going to talk about that water running down the hill. You can <laughs> see the water, how deep it is, and it's just running down the hill. And we'll try to get a thing wow, here. Looks man. like Adam McGill and. I'm not sure who that is. Walker Fowler maybe winning? Man, they are moving right now, and they are rolling up that hill. I see first and second. Is that McGill and, uh, uh, and, McGill and Fowler maybe? And then I think it was Fowler, McGill, yeah. Sneaky Snake, and then there was Chris Ford. Yeah, so I think that things have really changed the and face of this race. Wolf. 
There's Brian Wolf. Man, ever all the players are right there right now. You know, we asked uh, ask, uh, Steve there a few minutes ago about his predictions, his podium predictions out there. Um, since I already gave mine away uh, with Sneaky Snake, I'm going to have to say my podium predictions coming into this week would have been, uh, I, I again, McClure was one of those. I was going to pick him for the win. I was going to pick uh, Bryson Neal and Chris Borch for my top three. Now, whether or not that's the case, we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, right. I think anything can happen right now, and I'm with you. I was going to go with Adam McGill and Walker Fowler. I had a hard time picking out who, which one of those guys I thought was going to win, but I was going to go with Walker since he's an Ohio boy, and I was going to go with Walker, Adam, and Borch. So, yeah, that's I mean, they're all good picks. Yeah, they are. They're all right there. They all need to be where they're at and to win this race, and I think they'll be coming to the pits right now, right, Rodney, after this uphill? Is they coming to the yeah, pits? Yeah, this is, uh, I believe, shortly after that, we go to the pits. We're an hour and 23 minutes into this race. Rodney Tomlin along with Fred Andrews. Megawatt Matt Watson is <laughs> standing by. Matt has got one of the most – Matt, get your mic. Turn your mic on there, Matt. I know you've been out and about, and you've been uh, – other one, yellow one. Uh, we're, you've been out and about, man. What's been going on? I know the pits are kind of uh, – inconveniently located as far as studio coverage is concerned like that. But I mean, we're seeing these teams run from one side of the ski resort to the other right now. Yeah, it's got a unique challenge in its own right now with the weather conditions, Rodney. Like you said, guys are scrambling from the uh, west side of the mountain back to the east side of the mountain with everything from goggles to gas cans to spare gloves. Uh, grip is becoming a uh, situation out there, having a grip on the bike. But I can tell you this much, the uh, east side below the hotels basically bare. Every tent that you can find, every awning that you can find just loaded with people and uh, everybody kind of waiting this one out. Looks like it's going to move right past us and the last half hour of this race is going to end under sunshine. Wow, that's uh, and, and you can see it. You can see some blue skies starting to break through there and the mountains off in the distance right now really starting to brighten up and very good observation there, Matt. Now, uh, watching these guys go back and forth, if you had a chance to talk, I mean, we got some pretty wild scenarios uh, uh, shaping up right here right now. You got McGill, McClure, uh, Fowler, Neal, now uh, Chris Borch is up there in the thick of things. I mean, things are really starting to change right now. All I can tell you is each one of those guys you talk about has multiple people right now under an umbrella with fanny packs, like I said, with goggles, with gloves, with uh, toolkits and that kind of stuff, really waiting to see what's going to, uh, how this is going to play out in the last uh, portions of this race. Yeah, about a half hour or so left to go in this with 25, an hour and 25 minutes in. Uh, we are waiting right now for the leaders to check in on the, um, I guess this will be the long side. We're back over on the west side of the mountain. That's what we're waiting for and watching for right now is got some of these guys. Is that They're actually running the leaders already came down this road. It was Adam McGill, Walker Fowler, McClure, and Borge. Yep. And they were five so seconds apart. They were right there. And they're close and, together. And, and they're going back and forth because Fowler up that uphill, that FMF uphill right there, was just ahead of the 521, if I'm not mistaken. And it's, it's, we've seen a lot of passes today. That's one thing, too, Fred, if you, if you think about it. There has been quite a few passes taking place again today. Yeah, there sure was, Rodney. We really didn't get to see the pit, so I don't know if Walker maybe stopped and got some goggles. Maybe that's how those guys got around him or not. But I did notice that coming into the pit area, the right-hand turn, before you come to Pro Road, there's a giant water hole there now. Whether maybe uh. one of the drain systems is backed up or maybe it's just a low spot in the asphalt. But those guys came through there and water was going everywhere. So that's kind of be, be a tricky spot on the asphalt. Wow, yeah, that's another element to add in to it. Slick asphalt now that we got the rain coming down on it. But I mean, if you look, uh, it's looking like it could turn out to be good, but uh, we're not gonna keep our fingers crossed on that. Well, we just got, uh, and I just wow, heard that a few moments a ago, thing. we just had a major strike of lightning, and it looks like they're going to call this race a little bit early. Wow, that is certainly going to change the face of this. Matt Watson heading up to the podium right now. want to let you know, uh, lightning is uh, certainly one thing that we normally don't have to deal with a lot. We've always been able to avoid that, but uh, we just heard the lightning uh, strike, and we heard the thunder a few moments, saw the lightning strike, and, and heard the thunder there just a few moments ago. Uh, we are at an elevation uh, nearly a mile high right now, so one thing that we got to caution and remind every fan that is here with us right now, please seek shelter inside, away from the outside. 
Uh, we don't know what's going to be happening. We don't know if more lightning is on the way. It's so unpredictable. So for the safety of everyone, we encourage everyone to get inside. That does not include hanging out underneath a canopy. That means get inside of a vehicle, get inside of uh, a structure someplace, somehow or another. And we are going to be throwing the checkers on this one a little early right now, folks, as we are watching our leaders, I think, making their way into the finish line region. And this is going to be a real shocker for whoever it is and whoever happens to be out of front right now. It's going to be the one coming away with a white flag. Actually, that's a white flag coming out. So maybe they're not going to call it. I don't know. We just got the, the word that that's what they were going to do. So we're just going to have to wait and see. Maybe they're going to let them run this short loop to see what. Look at this. Nose to tail coming through there right now is Adam McGill and Jared McClure, one and two. Walker Fowler, I think, was oh, second, was that actually. Walker, was, was that Walker, Walker Fowler? Fowler? Yeah. McClure. Yes, okay. So there they are, nose to, no, nose to tail, nose to tail there. And again, we've lost timing and scoring. That might have been part of the yeah. lightning strike, too. <laughs> yeah, it was definitely a loud boom and some lightning going off there, Rodney, for sure. And you know, that's the safest thing to do. We're, like you say, we're up here at Mile High. Nobody wants to be stuck out here with lightning going on. No, no, not at all. So uh, that's, uh, that's what we're uh, being uh, I informed of. We do have the white flag out. This is the last lap, so uh, it'll be about a seven minutes. Here comes uh, Bryce and Neil through right now. I don't have timing and scoring up right now, so we can't give an official account of what's taking place computerized. So we're going to have to go off of our off of uh, site. But again, we got to take into account the time adjustments out there, Fred, that we can't do on site right now. There's McClure, or excuse me, there's the number six of Bryce and Neil now uh, heading into that final portion of this race today. You know, Roddy, they probably went through that last pit board, the last pit stop area, and they probably told them, hey, two laps left to go, you know, got time, just be where you're at. Well, all of a sudden they come through there, and now with the lightning out there, we're gonna call it early, they got the white flag. So now they're kind of in panic mode, I would think. Like, yeah. oh no, I gotta do it now, and this is a short side, so this race is gonna be really intense. Wow, with Chris Borch being where he was, do you think this could be an advantage for him quite possibly in this, uh, final lap like this. I mean, he wasn't far off pace right there. You didn't have Walker Fowler far off pace either. I mean, uh, it's, it's, I guess, really anybody's advantage, but this could maybe uh, be the race that Chris Porch is looking for if he can pull this one out. Yeah, I can see everybody being real close to being excited because nobody really thought it was going to happen or end this quick. So these guys may be making some bad choices trying to make things yeah. happen, you know, and then yeah, it's very good point. That white, that white flag coming out, that could force people into mistakes uh, in this, uh, you know, trying to make those last second uh, grabs, thinking they might have a little bit of extra time to make it happen. And I don't think that so much is going to be the case. But uh, last check was McGill leading Walker Fowler with Chris Borch. That's what we were seeing physically, I think, last time, last time through. And you can see now, Rodney, the sun's starting to come out, and it's – Starting to look all, all kind of pretty, but being up here on That's the mountain. Deceiving. Yeah, it can change it in. Because any that second. blue sky that we were looking at a minute ago is now being replaced by those thick, <laughs> heavy clouds. And those could be packed. Here comes round two. <laughs> that would be, yeah, exactly. Might, well, it could be round three. We had a slight little shower at the beginning of the race. That heavy shower here in the middle of the race, the lightning now, yeah, big rain could be coming. I don't know what the radar is looking like right now, but I know that. Yeah, the, the bike guys are probably sweating it, but looking at the forecast for tomorrow, one o'clock's race, it's looking absolutely prime, man. Yeah, it'd be nice to race with the sun out here. You know, a little bit of dust we had maybe last year. We're definitely not gonna have any dust this year with Mother Nature watering us. Well, I tell you what, Adam McGill being the uh, only natural born uh, native of West Virginia to ever win this race, uh, coming into this one pretty excited. And as he rolls toward the checkers right now, possibly be the only four time winner of this event, we had a chance to catch up with him before the day got underway. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we've uh, we've had the points lead since Georgia coming into Snowshoe, which is around nine. I mean, anything can happen here. We've uh, We've never been in a situation like we are now, but to be able to to be leading the points coming into my hometown race, I think it's definitely definitely nice and comforting to have, but it's also kind of a heavy burden. Uh, and what I mean by that is this race is very very touch and go with me. I've been very successful here, and I've been very unsuccessful here. So my races here seem to go good or bad. So hopefully, you know, everything aligns, everything works well, and hopefully we can come out of Snowshoe with another win and make it four here at Snowshoe. And 
continue to be king of the mountains. So you got the mafia out there, out there on the uh, the track with the green shirts. You got 150 of them out there plus. So definitely, I think it's going to be a good day for the McGill Mafia and the um, and the crew here. So. Wow, Fred Andrews. I mean, if you know if you know Adam McGill, that's not the Adam McGill no, you know. Not at all, Ron. He's always joking and making fun of things and having fun and. He's actually looking kind of serious, like a little businessman or something. <laughs> he is. And I've been noticing that trans that transition over the course of the, the, the last few rounds. And like he said, man, uh, he's had the points lead for a while now, and that's been something that I'm sure is, it's really a lot to think about, you know. And, and I was talking to somebody about it earlier today, and they said, you know, I said, I've never seen uh, Adam McGill so serious. He seems like a totally different person. They said, well, he's never had so much to lose before, you know, before. He, he had a lot to gain and, and nothing to lose. Now he's got a lot more to lose, so I can understand why he's so serious at this point. He's serious, Rodney, but he's still having fun. Yeah. You can see he's still smiling. He still wants to be the Adam McGill that we all know so well and part of the Mafia West where everybody wants to be like Adam and to be the jokester. But, you know, he's starting to think, you know, maybe uh, maybe this is really is going to happen. You know, he's been so close so many years to being a champion. A lot of things didn't go right for him. He had some problems here and there. Well, this year it seems like everything is going right for him. So he's kind of changing his demeanor a little bit, but it's still Adam McGill that we know, and I'm sure after this race, when he gets up there on the podium, if he happens to win, you're gonna see the one that we know. He's gonna be yelling and screaming and jumping up and down and having a good time. He most certainly will as we continue to watch this race. Can Adam McGill become the only four-time winner of this ATV race and four time winning in the uh, Blackwater for Mark Hyde earned him title of King of Blackwater. Will Adam McGill then be called King of Snowshoe? <laughs> yeah, I think that's what he said in his interview. He wants to be the King of the Mountain. So at this point, it looks like he's going to be King of the Mountain this year. No doubt. The king of uh, Snowshoe but Mountain. But he's got those guys behind him, all three of them. Yeah. They don't want Adam McGill to be King. No, they do not. <laughs> they oh. want to steal his thunder and steal his throne of being King and you know, they're all there, and uh, it's going to be exciting to see who comes across the line. And, you know, we've got some good corners here and there before the finish, so these guys will be pushing each other. And McClure is up front as he comes into the finish line. A big change, as we told you, and I think that we may be looking at the upset Whoa. of the weekend right here, my friends. McClure, we get... Fowler just going through, too. We're going to be waiting for the official results on this one right now. But I think that Sneaky Snake may have just... Yep. Walker Fowler second. Walker Fowler coming across in second. And look at that right there, Fred Andrews. The <laughs> snake has done it. Now make it, wow, out of these eight times, he has finished on the podium six times in the top five. Now three times in his first ever win at Snowshoe and his first ever XC1 overall class win going to Jared McClure here today, it looks like, at least unofficially for this rider. As uh, we see Bryson Neal going in, I don't know where that's going to put him in the overall, but I'm looking at my timing and scoring. I have nothing on timing and scoring. It uh, looks like uh, the Internet is down for those guys over there for whatever reason, so I have no idea what the official results are going on at this moment, but I know that something monumental just took place here on Snowshoe Mountain as we celebrate 40 years of the Blackwater 100. Man, Ron, he's put himself in this position this last few races. He's always been on the podium, the top three, and he did that today. He put himself in the position to win. He was there all day long, and the last lap, Adam McGill made a mistake or something happened to him, but Sneaky Snake did a great job today. Congratulations to him. He's finally won his first GNCC, and what a race to win, Rodney. You're up here on the mountain. You're winning probably one of the most prestigious races that we have on the circuit, and he won it today. And Man, look at all those people congratulating him, from Walker Fowler's dad to everybody just being happy for him. And I think we're still waiting for Adam McGill to come in right now. It looks like maybe that might be Chris Borge coming in right now. He's coming to the finish line. And once our scoring gets, scoring gets uh, up and running, we'll be able to tell you how the rest of the guys did for sure. Well, unofficially, what we're getting right now, I just got in. We've got McClure taking the win, Walker Fowler taking second, Bryson Neal taking third. Well, I told you there could be some upsets out there. And that looks like Rambi right there's McGill coming into the pit right now. Adam McGill coming into the pits. Uh, Chris Boards did finish just ahead of him, but also Walker Fowler did two several positions, so that's going to be a big catch up for Walker Fowler. We're seeing 
the uh, the exact exact opposite happened for him, and you got to wonder what happened to uh, the 521. I, I can tell you what happened. He rode a smart, solid race. He did not want to try to to. He's not he's not a bit happy right now, but he rode a smart race just to get to this one and finish it right now. You you know that's the case. As Adam McGill rolls off into the sunset, unofficially again, McClure, Fowler. And uh, that third place overall going to uh, Bryce and Neal. There's Chris Borich as Chris Borich rolls in front of the uh, the uh, race day studio trailers. He and Adam McGill actually are stopping and talking out there right now. You can see they're passing along some uh, different information. Rather interesting and intriguing way things broke down out there. And you can tell they're talking about something out there. Don't know what it is they're discussing, but neither one of those are riders are very happy about what happened on that last little section of racetrack, I don't think. Yeah, Rodney, I'm not sure either, but from sitting right here looking at that discussion, I think it was a little more a little more heat than just <laughs> saying, hey, nice job today. I think they, you know, they may have gotten together. They were right there the last lap, and Adam and him may have been going for the winning, tangled wheels and messed up, and, you know, that's part of racing, and we're only guessing. we got no idea, but no. from... Sitting here watching it, seemed like it was kind of heated. Here's the great thing about it, though. Ad, or Jarrett McClure will have a first-hand account, I'm sure, of exactly what happened right there as he rolls. Man, can you believe it? Sneaky Snake, I told him. I rolled past his pits this morning. I told him, I said, dude, I said, with rain and, the, and everything that's coming up, I said, this is a good place. There's a lot of rocks out there. It's a good place for the Sneaky Snake to hide. He said, I know, man. Thanks, Rodney. <laughs> uh, and I said, and uh, wow, man, I, I I was feeling it. Like I said, man, coming in, I, I tried not to allude to it and quick feel too much. But man, I, I mean, last since last week, I've been feeling this whole McClure thing. I don't, I know I'm tooting my own horn now after the fact, but I'm just so excited. No, we're happy for him, man. It's your I first am. win. He's been out there so many years trying to do this. He's finally done it, man. Let's just give him his, what he deserves. Yeah, Jerry Great McClure job has finished now six our fixed finish top five or better six of the nine runnings here at snowshoe a third place in 08 fifth place in 09 fifth place in 11 fourth place in 12 third place in 14 and the big one here in 2015 how about it man i tell you mcclure has really he's paid his dues fred he has certainly paid his dues and we know that uh, to be the case again your top uh, three here today will be Jerry McClure, Walker Fowler, and Bryce and Neil. That's still unofficial. We'll have the official account coming up for you in just a few moments. We'll also have podium celebrations coming up for you. Stand by as GNCC Live continues on RacerTV.com. General RV is going to help you go camping. With locations across the nation and thousands of RVs to choose from, General RV is the nation's largest family-owned RV dealer. At General RV, you'll save thousands on everything from trailers that sleep the whole family right up to motorhomes that are amazing and so economical to travel in. General RV is the only dealer who can show you this much and save you this much with a great deal for you. And welcome back to GNCC Live, where we just wrapped it up. An hour and 34 or five minute race, I think is what we were looking at there. And uh, Fred Andrews, I tell you what a day, man. Exciting things taking place. We didn't know what uh, was gonna happen. The unknown variables that we talked about, I think may have came into play into this one. And we got ourselves a new 
First time winner in GNCC racing here in the XC1 Pro class and a new winner of this snowshoe GNCC itself. Jared McClure, Casca, Pennsylvania, ATBriders.com sponsored rider. Man, I tell you, I know that uh, Harlan Foley and the boys are pretty excited and pumped up for that ride, and uh, <laughs> rightfully so, man. I mean, this to win, to win a GNCC, Fred Andrews, is, is monumental. To win a race like this, you know as well as I do, you won the, the final Blackwater back in 1993, but to win at a venue such as, uh, as this, the prestige, the everything that is put onto this one, it, it, it makes it that much more special. Oh, for sure, Ronnie. These are one of the most, I mean, just winning a GNC is special, but like I said, this one here has just got a little bit extra to it because it's so unique, it's so different, it's something that isn't like all the other GNCCs that we do where we race in town, we're on asphalt, and you know, he was so happy last year yeah. up here. I hate to see how happy he is tonight. <laughs> <laughs> we may have to escort McClure off the mountain yeah, this year. Yeah, he may be <laughs> better off celebrating somewhere else. Yeah, 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 celebrations got a little out of hand for him last year, yeah. but we can't prove that. <laughs> no, nope, but you know, he deserves it. He's been working hard, he like has. I said, he's putting in all that time, all that years, all this training, it's finally paid off for him, and what a great ra race to what a great race to win and a time to do it. Now he's got all summer oh, to think wow. about this, to keep himself going. And look at Dutchy. Dutchy's got <laughs> the shirt. He <laughs> called it. Good job, Dutchy. <laughs> Steve Van Zylen holding up that McClure shirt as he went by. Wow, man. I mean, you bring up a good point. Here we are heading into this big summer break. There's a lot of things going on here, man. Adam McGill just lost the lunch points to Walker Fowler. It's good momentum for Walker. Uh, Adam, uh, it could be it could be something that plays in his mind, but at the same time, he might be uh, seasoned enough. It might not, but he's not seasoned enough as a points leader, so they, a lot of things can go uh, wild there for him. McClure here, he's got, man, I mean, we see nothing but better and better rides out of him. It's been prog progressively getting better each and every round, and then all of a sudden, you know, we're, we're looking at him and, and expecting him to be a podium contender every week. Now do we start looking at him as a winner every week, and if that's the case, all of a sudden we got Walker Fowler, we got Chris Borich, we got guys like uh, Chris Bithel that we can call a winner. Obviously, Adam McGill and uh, Bryson Neal could do, be even throwing his hat into the ring of that one as well. So, I mean, new names are all of a sudden starting to become uh, apparent as winners, and the depth of uh, talent pool is that much deeper, and I think that GNCC Racing just gets that much more exciting when that happens. Oh, yeah, Rodney. Like, we've been announcing all year long, and we've not had one race boring. Every race has been exciting. There's new guys up there showing that all the hard work they've done, they deserve to win, and you know, Jared McClure did it today. He's been up there week in, week out, getting seconds and thirds and coming close. Well, this race here, he did it. He put himself where he needed to be, and he won, and wow. he's gonna be one happy camper for a long time, that's for L sure. Lightning striking off in the distance. Well, actually, not so far off in the distance. It's getting closer. That's like the third strike we've seen since the checker flag has come out, so anyone that doubts the decision to uh, throw this one a little early. There's Dutchie with that jersey that he just went down with <laughs> for uh, McClure there. But anyone that may doubt the decision that, that was like made. It looks like Brian Wolf's down there too. Oh did my, so maybe, maybe he did on time adjustments because Bryce and Neil, we did see Neil going that way. We see uh, Ryan down there, we see Annie, so it looks like they got him. Now, if this is right, it looks like he would be third place if he's on the podium right there in the uh, celebrations. Uh, right now, uh, we got McClure in the middle. We got to the to the right of that uh, is uh, would be third place under normal circumstances. And look, a moose racer, a moose racer. You know, the big question is, who? Wonder how many people actually guessed this podium in the Amsoil Podium Predictions Contest. That's that's a big question. Who would have said? Now get this, I almost did, but who would have said? I wouldn't have picked Walker in this one though. But who almost said, or who did say McClure, Fowler, and uh, Wolf there? Wow. Did you? No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I knew Brian was going to be there, but I figured Brian would be fighting for the win and yeah. have a little bit of trouble like he always does because he loves this place. He wants to win. He'd rather win or break, it seems like. Yeah. And he got a third place, so that was a good ride for him. And Walker well, Fowler, I think, he gained a whole bunch of points today. On time adjustments, we just got the, uh, he is third place overall on time adjustments. Again, that's the one thing we got to take into account. 
<laughs> third place physically on it was Bryson Neal. This is the second week or second race in a row that poor Bryson Neal has gotten beaten out on time <laughs> adjustments, man. You know, I can guarantee you after the break, it's a no-holds-barred situation for that young rider. <laughs> Yeah, but, you know, I don't think he's really he, – he's not too disappointed about the whole situation because he did as great a job as he could. He rode his heart out, and he came up a little short. He knows that he's improving week in, week out, so it's just a building block for him. Walker Fowler is the one we're waiting on right now at the podium, so we're waiting to get uh, Walker to the podium, and we'll begin podium celebrations here. And uh, do we have a winner yet in our Amsoil Podium Predictions Contest for $250 in great Amsoil product? Maybe we'll get that name up for you and congratulate that winner also coming up here. But wow, man, what a day. Again, uh, let's just go ahead and reflect on this one while we got just a few moments. Uh, Fred Andrews, uh, coming into this one for me, again, uh, I, I said uh, a lot of unknown variables. I took into account 40 years ago began uh, the Blackwater and what we know today now is modern day GNCC racing. Uh, 1863, the, uh, the state of West Virginia was born and it became a state on this day uh, 152 years ago. And being here in the great state of West Virginia, I knew that uh, with those two things, it being a tribute to the snow sh or to the uh, to the Blackwater, that we had the uh, likelihood, the possibility of something exciting happening, and that's exactly what took place. We can hear that uh, things are getting uh, geared up down there on the podium right now with Mega Rock Matt Watson again. How are you, Snowshoe? GNCC fans are the most resilient fans in all of motorsports. We had a lightning situation, and as per pro snowshoe protocol, when there is lightning on the mountain, that is why we immediately threw the white flag. There was actually more time left. There should have been a two-car go out. Lightning came through. We had to throw the white flag, and so we did come up just a bit short. I'm not sure what the overall time was, um, but that's the reason we're a bit short. Also, according to uh, snowshoe protocol, all of the PA and everything has to go down, so we're going to use our little PA, and we're going to get through... Uh, with our podium. So if our, our top riders could come up on the stage now, we would like to have them. You can go over here by the zip line and uh, up on the stage that way. Well, right now, uh, Megawatt is bringing everyone up onto the podium. Uh, Tim Cotter, uh, talking about the resilience of the GNCC racing fan. And I tell you, he's so very right. I mean, you got lightning strikes all around here and being warned to get <laughs> inside and uh, they aren't. But of course, I think that we're still far enough away that we should be okay with it. And the weather actually seems to be lightening up. I think a lot of that might be going is that, we saw some of it going to our south a little bit ago. And I think that might be what we're seeing right now, witnessing that off in the distance at, to the south. But you can see some of the heavier stuff you can see the split on the TV screen right now as you look out over the uh, West Virginia mountains here. Yeah, right, and some of the rain actually did start back up, and as Tim was on the podium, we even saw more lightning out in the, out in the sky, but I think you're right. I think it's kind of moving. Maybe the mountains help push a little bit of a way out of our way, and we can get this podium presentation undone. But even though the race was a little bit short due to the lightning, it was a great race, and... Uh, I can't wait to see what happens with the bikes tomorrow. You know, the four-wheeler guys did a great job, kept things exciting. And for tomorrow, we've got some new riders into the series. We've got uh, Taylor Roberts coming in. Mike Brown's going to race tomorrow yeah. on the bike side. Yeah. We've got Gary Sutherland, one of the other ISDE guys, is coming to race. So we've got some heavy hitters from the West Coast coming here. And, and like I said, Taylor Roberts was the first one I yeah. said. But, and I was you know, there's a lot of good guys here, and it shows that – GNCC racing is important, and we wanted to get some right, West Coast guys who want to come back here and Fowler, tangle with us. I think he's on his way here. All right, we're going to be heading up to the podium here, here in we'll just get our a second. Megawatt, Matt Watson. Unique set of circumstances out there today, of course, about a one hour and 35 minute race, as Mr. Cotter explained. And of course, there is another front moving in, so we absolutely want to get our podium taken care of as soon as possible. We've got Brian Wolf up here in third place. We've got Jared McClure taking the win. We're waiting on our man Walker Fowler in second place to get his account of exactly what went down out there today as well in these unique situations up on the mountain here today. So should be ready to go here in just a second. I see Walker's dad. I see the mechanic. Uh, I see his mechanic, and I see Walker making his way down the uh, walkway right now. We will be in business here in just one second. 
this was hard, but you put this on your chin. All right, well, they, well, they get it sorted out, and Megawatt gets uh, instructions there from uh, Tim Cotter. They're getting things ready to go down there. But I was talking with... Um, All right, everybody, Walker Fowler making his way on the podium right now. We're going to go ahead and make our way over to third place right now. If you would, go ahead and make some noise, Snowshoe, for our man, Brian Wolf. Brian, got a, quite the fan club out there, Brian. Got all kinds of noise being made for you out there today. Crazy race, crazy set of circumstances, man. What's your take on it today? It was crazy, just like it's always out here at Snowshoe. Um, you know, we didn't expect this rain. Well, I guess we expected it, but it was so beautiful at the start of the race. I don't know, it might have started raining, but anyways, when we were walking up there, it was beautiful, and then we were hoping that's how the day was going to go, and I biked, uh, I went out there at 7.30 this morning, biked this whole side of the mountain, and I knew it was going to be pretty uh, nasty out there, so helped some of the mowing riders out and had a ball doing that, and uh, it was just uh, an exciting race all the way to the end. I wish we kind of would have had 25 more minutes, but uh, it is what it is. Right on. Hey, Brian, in these kind of conditions, it takes a lot of help. So who do you want to thank today for helping you, bud? Well, you know, I want to thank definitely my family, Jeremiah, Ava. That's my wife right there. She, she's amazing. She does so many things to get us to the races in week in and week in out. And she's like the backbone of me with everything I do. So, honey, I love you. Appreciate all the help. You know, uh, Corbin Knox and uh, you know, Merle and uh, Angel, those guys have been really putting a lot in my program this year. They've been prepping my bike every race in and uh, that's just huge, and I appreciate all their help. And then uh, all the people have backed me through the years, Fast Tracks, uh, Norm from Fast Tracks, Alka, State 8, uh, Pro Circuit, Dirt Works, Texera, um, Maxis, um, Precision, Sunstar, Moose Racing, Spider Graphics, and uh, Quad Tech. Awesome, congratulations, Brian. Thank you so much. We gotta get her moving, buddy. Right over here, second place. Walker is moving in on us quick, man. Tell us about it. Uh, you know, we had a good start, and uh, you know the race tells it all. We ended up here in second. Uh, can't thank the fans enough down in the mud hole and the uh, the other side of the mountain. All the kids, it's awesome. Uh, we just had a great day. Uh, you know, it's not a win, but it's awesome to see Jared get his first one. It's always cool to be up here when uh, riders get their first wins. And um, definitely, just just thanks everybody. Uh, I want to give the the glory to God first and foremost. All the awesome fans again. Uh, my girlfriend and her dad and uh, B Lisa, thank you for coming. That was awesome. Uh, my mechanic, his whole family, thank you guys. And Fabian Pro Yamaha, uh, Moto Experts, Lone Star Maxis, <coughs> excuse me, Hiller National, Hyper Wheels, um, excuse me, DP Brakes, Tire Balls, uh, IMS CB4, Works Connection, GYTR DAD, Dragon Fuels. Uh, just all our sponsors, thank you guys. It was such an awesome day. And uh, like I said, appreciate the fans. And we're going to have a good time tonight. But yes, we are. Congratulations on second place, Walker. And over here in the middle of the podium for the first time, Jared McClure. Jared, what a smile on your face, man. That's it, Snowshoe. Let's hear it. Hey, Jared, we got to make this quick, buddy. we got a storm coming in, but I know you want to savor the moment. Tell us about your race and tell us who you want to thank today, man. Uh, race went pretty good overall. Uh, had to lead early on there. Uh, had a little get off, but it, uh, it was nothing crazy. I got going again. Uh, rode behind Adam for a while. Uh, you know, didn't really get stuck. You know, the DWT tires out there today worked awesome. I mean, it, I didn't get stuck anywhere. I, I did, like I say, clip a tree, rolled it, but uh, got going pretty quick. And uh, you know, started pouring that last lap. Walker got around us, started bombing through some stuff. And uh, you know, that's when the chaos happened, and we hit the mud hole down here. And I just uh, came out on, came out ahead of everybody. So. Uh, you know, super excited to be up here. Uh, just gonna thank uh, uh, John Bowers um, for uh, filling my motor, always being there. You know, for the helping me with the bike and everything from Bowers Motorcycle Supplies. Uh, dad for being here. My dad, it's Father's Day. I want to say Happy Father's Day. <laughs> He's the best. Uh, you know, uh, AP Riders, Harlan, uh, Texera Tech, Elka, DWT Tires. Uh, <coughs> uh, PowerMed, uh, HMF, Jay Goble. He's here. Impact Solutions. Uh, Anybody I forget, I'm sorry. Uh, you know, it's raining here. I gotta, gotta hurry up, so thank you. Awesome. Hey, congratulations. Make some noise, Snowshoe. Jared McClure for his first ever win. Brian Wolf had that uh, cap off a little early over there. We're gonna get this champagne spray going. 
and we appreciate everybody being right here at the podium. We're going to get our next group up here. We're on a weather hold. We're not going to. Okay, we are on a weather hold, folks. So we appreciate your cooperation. Please get your easy ups down. Please get your uh, campsite secured. As Please they wrap sure things up there on the podium right, right now. now, we're going to. Uh, Go ahead and ramp things up here as far as the show goes. Uh, again, if you're thinking they might have made a wrong call, is lightning has gotten closer, it's gotten more frequent, it's getting here and it's moving in on us fast. I want to say congratulations to M at Latimer Emily. Emily Latimer, I guess you had uh, predicted Adam McGill, Walker Fowler, and Bryson Neal to be your podium uh, winners, but uh, unfortunately, she wasn't right about that. Fortunately, she got her name drawn anyway. Congratulations, Emily Latimer. At Latimer Emily, you are winning $250 in great Amsoil product. Well, Fred Andrews, uh, with the lightning and everything in the area, we're going to get a crew in and out of the, off the, uh, the trails and everything. I want to say thanks. Good job to the uh, camera crew, to the uh, crew over in the uh, trailer as well, and to you and uh, Megawatt Matt Watson as well. You guys did another great job here today. Thanks, Rodney. And as you can see, you know, these clouds are rolling in here, so we need to get off there, like you said. And uh, we'll look forward to tomorrow. We had a great time, and you did a great job. And I'll look forward to the, uh, a little bit of break, and we'll be back. All righty. GNCC Live continues tomorrow, 1 o'clock. Be here or be square is all I can say, <laughs> because we're going to have big things happening, celebrating 40 years of Blackwater 100. Happy birthday, West Virginia.